Thank you, Sir Action Slacks. A very informative interview, as always. Lower bracket semifinals of TI-11, Aster versus Team Liquid, game number one. Sandra, I didn't even get your thoughts on the draft here. Yeah, I mean, I... I feel like it's interesting that you have this much time to prepare and you don't really know what to expect. And I would say, as far as surprises go, I feel like Astro are bringing something new here. They do get this D-Ward, by the way, worth mentioning, is a little bit of a head start for them in that mid lane. Uh, they're bringing some stuff here that we haven't seen them play that much. They're playing the Underlord on XXS, the Spirit Breaker on Bobuka. I don't think they played these heroes much, if at all, in the playoffs, whereas Liquid are more sticking to their guns of what we've seen, so... This is something I'm very curious to see throughout this day in the next series as well, like how the teams prepare and have different approaches. I'm not going to say one is better than the other because I genuinely don't know, but it seems like the I mean, that's the thing the about approaches. That's the thing about having this many days off is the theory crafting probably gets to the point where it's not even helpful anymore. We're going to see the rebound here from Boxy, but the Siamese Cat's going to be uh, A-OK. -okay. And it looks like the bounties have been split evenly to start us off here for today. Yeah, and it will be the expected lanes here, so bottom lane will be Brood together with Marcy against Maiden Sniper, mid is Lesh against Lina, and finally top lane, Underlord Spirit Breaker facing off against Lich Bloodseeker. So as, as we talked about on the panel, probably a slight edge in the mid lane to Mickey here with the Lina matchup against Lesh. We've seen this played a decent amount this tournament. Lesh has been an incredibly popular and Lina has been one of the best responses that we've set our eyes on. As, speaking of which, setting eyes on Bobaka is playing very aggressively onto Insania, killing charge level one for some damage. As Mickey and Ori facing off in the mid lane, Lina versus Leshrak. You can see Zai getting harassed by quite a bit as we have a pause. And I don't know if those are oohs, ahs, or boos, or all of the above, Cinderin, but the first pause today. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> the crowd goes ah. <laughs> what a pause! <laughs> so I imagine we have a small tech issue. We have not been given a reason just yet for why this pauses, but this gives us a little bit more time. Alright, so disconnect from Insania makes it seem... Well, I've heard some players uh, have to change their chat wheel to be not GG, oh. but of course that might not relate to these teams at all, considering they're all good manner players. Yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine a player like Insania having GG in his chat, <laughs> but... Yeah, you never know. You'd be PMA. surprised. You'd be surprised once you... You know, That's you true. might have your opinion on players, and then you meet them in, in real life. It's... Never meet your totally heroes. Different, totally different beast, you know? Never meet your heroes, and that's why I regret ever meeting Sir Action Slacks. <laughs> he was your hero? That's true, actually. That, that wasn't accurate at all. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there regardless. The, the conclusion is never meet Slacks. Yes. Yeah. I think that was what I was trying to get across. Appreciate that, sir. That's why you're here. You're analyzing yep. uh, my thoughts. Telling you no. what you wanted to say. That's right. Very good. Uh, tell me, how did, how does Zai play Brood this game? Yeah, so it, it sounded like, so Toby is quite the Brood specialist, right? And it sounded like he thinks this should be a free lane for Brood. Um, I don't play the hero much. I feel like, from my perspective, Maiden Sniper probably does okay, or at least for a few levels. Once Brood gets level 6, you're screwed down here as Maiden Sniper. You have to evacuate and solve it, but that's where Astra have a hero like Underlord who could go there. They could park the Lesh there if they really have to to defend the tower. Uh, but for starters, I would imagine this double range lane does fine against Brood. Zai will just try to stay alive, get some CS where he can. Uh, you're seeing Boxy currently planning on pulling the wave down there to try to get a, a bit, little bit of a different lane positioning so that Brood can get closer to his tower. And then... Well, we're about to unpot. I, I want to get the crowd's reaction here. Let, let's do a, a live poll since we have some time here. Can I hear who is rooting for Aster today? Aster. Okay, that was kind of underwhelming. I'm not that was lie. lukewarm. And what about Team Liquid? Oh my. Okay. So we have some bias here in the crowd. Uh, first it was OG, but they're not here anymore. So transition to the next EU team. As we are underway again. Insania pushing back Boboka. Uh, mid lane still relatively even on, but two denies already for Mickey, but relatively a wash at the moment. Boca is still taking damage from Insania. If you had told me six months ago that Lich and CM would be played to this extent, Cinder, and I would not have believed you. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really interesting development. I think especially Lich, because Crystal Maiden has kind of had her time on and off recently, but Lich has been quite a while since we've seen given this priority. A little bit of a poke back and forth. Yeah, Zai. <laughs> this is kind of a weird setup right now. Monet kind of on the other side of his tower. 
But the rebound is there on top of the sniper for Monet. On the right click away, no dispose yet because Boxy's still only level one, but in the end, a lot of harassment damage traded each way. Yeah, if you if you play Dota casually, you'd be like, why are two heroes behind the tier one tower minute one? Um, and this is simply what happens when the position four in the enemy team repulls and repositions the wave behind there. You have to go and contest this experience in gold. You can't just let the liquid side get that for free when you have this double range lane. You are willing to take those trades. And ultimately what ends up happening is that Zai has a grand total of two CS to the 10 of Sniper with a good head start here on Monet. Getting yeah, in behind there the rebound. Dispose is available this time. Shrapnel comes out to do some residual damage. Monet taking the brunt of it though. Do they have enough to get first blood in this game? Boxy continuing on and there it is. Boxy with the first blood as Sniper goes bye-bye. Great start for Liquid in this lane, despite, like you said, the CS for Zai not being too respectable, but this should open it up at least a little bit for him. Yeah, so he's not the one getting the first blood, but he gets the space in the lane now, right? He gets to, uh -uh. I believe, deny two range creeps here, potentially. Nah, I think the second one will be secured here. Right. It will. By Pichu. But yeah, Zai will be very happy with that. Even if you don't get that first blood, just getting a little bit of time, he's now going to get his level three. Currently holding the skill point. Curious what he's going to choose because it feels like all of the skills here actually have some decent merit with how this lane's playing out. He's eyeing up his options, not choosing just yet. We'll go for the Silken Bola now. Okay, very nice. More uh, aggressive approach, I guess you could say. It's kind of hybrid, right? You can also use it to uh, to slow and run away. So. Yeah, but like you said, once he hits six, uh, should be scary times for Ash. I mean, at that point, what is, what is uh, Monet doing? Like, where can you go as a sniper? Oh, uh, see another oh. rebound this time onto Siamese Cat for the Crystal Maiden. Looks like that's gonna be another death in this lane for Aster. As Boxy and Zai kind of punishing, which we've seen so many times with the Marcy's in this tournament. Insania in the top lane, though, getting chased. Looks like he'll live as Matu trading some right clicks with XXS. Yeah, obviously the Bloodseeker benefiting massively as well whenever they play aggressively bottom gets that thirst bonus up top and trying to turn that into even more advantage here for Liquid. Yeah, you just, you've got to be really wary of your positioning and it's easier said than done, right? You're Crystal Maiden, you kind of want to at least put some sort of pressure and do some damage, but at this point when Marcy and Brood are both level 3, I think you have to backline behind the Sniper. If he gets jumped on, you use both your spells defensively and you try to reposition and, and stabilize. Um, at the same time, if you have to sacrifice somebody, it's better that the Maiden dies than the Sniper. And then ultimately when Brood hits 6, I think the Sniper is just going to sit maybe mid or you open up top and you play up there. Okay, Zai taking some serious damage bottom. Not enough to die, but he doesn't have any regen except one level in spin web. So it'll take quite a while before he's online to fight with Boxy again. And Boboka able to TP out. And I would expect the kills to start ramping up a little bit more now just because we have such aggressive heroes overall, especially with the Spear Breaker on the side of Aster. As we haven't really seen a gank mid, does that surprise you at all? Because I feel like that's a Spear Breaker special. As I say that he's charging oh, right now. There you go. Um, I don't think it's surprising we haven't had it yet, but I think this is a pretty good time to do it. Mickey's running out of mana. There's no power runes, but we'll not be able to find the angle here. Boba Cal is charging from base. Oh, Boxy. I right, trying to turn this around onto Monet. As Zai is going to be able to get the insatiable hunger off as well. And Monet's in a lot of trouble with the frostbite, dealing a lot of damage to Zai in the meantime. As Boxy looking for another kill for himself onto Monet. That is the second just for him. I'm not even sure if Zai was in the in range for XP at that point. I'm sure if uh, if Boxy got all of it, they don't really mind. Again, it's a matter of just giving Brute the space here to recover the CS in the lane. Uh, Zai currently sitting on 1-0 and 2 in terms of KDA, so... Oh, the charge coming from good. the other side from Boboka, but Boxy is ready for this, but the Split Earth is there with the Pulse Nova. Mickey taking tons of damage, does get off a good LSA, but it does not save him in the end as Boxy getting run down now by Ori's Pulse Nova. Double kill for him. And Zai, now that they know he's left to his own devices, they can kind of harass him out of lane to a degree. Oh my god, look how many creeps are mid too. Oh, they get the yeah. double kill. This is two full waves and a siege creep just hitting this tower. So, first of all, you get a lot of tower damage in here, but the death stings that much more for the Lina losing. Oh, Zai getting low, and Boboka's charge will finish the job as Aster now all over the map, as we kind of expected with the draft. 
able to take full advantage of this space count. Yeah, this is the luxury you have in this position with having this Underlord top. It's it's hard for Matsu to put meaningful pressure onto XXS, who's running a Bracer and Ring of Health. He's just buying a, a full self-sustained build. He's going to finish his Vanguard now as well, coming out on the Courier. So if you want to kill this Underlord as Liquid, you need to bring three plus heroes. I don't think they have any other way. Okay, no comms at all. Interesting strategy at TI-11, Monet. <laughs> the bottom, they do get that tier one tower, like you said, uh, but very even game despite that. And top lane is the one we haven't really talked about too much, but Matu. Maybe they're all watching Naruto. What's that? Maybe they were all watching Naruto. That's true. I mean, I talked to a couple of Liquid members as well during the break, and uh, I mean, they couldn't find scrim, right? None of these teams probably could find many scrims, so. Kind of a weird situation, and you kind of overanalyze probably. I think taking some days off was probably pretty important for a lot of these yeah. teams, just to reset, because especially for Liquid, who had all that momentum, that it, I don't know, I, I would have been super drained. The overall consensus that I gathered was that I think most teams, if not all of them, took one to two days Radiant's off and then started yeah, getting back into it. You know, you take a little bit of a break, make sure you don't overwork yourself. Because it is, it is very, very mentally taxing to prepare for these games, and you've obviously played a very long tournament already to get to this point, so getting that little bit of a breather, definitely helpful. Aster with a... I don't know if we should call this a recovery. Obviously, the bottom lane was not going too hot, but the rest of the map looking very good. And with that rotation bot where they killed Zai, they managed to take the tier one tower. They almost got the tier one tower mid as well, minute eight, which is very good news for Aster. Zai. Yeah, he wants to go on Monet, but he's going to get Frostbit and Charge. Already at half HP, and Monet can just right click from afar as the charge connects. And one more right click should do it, although Siamese Cat nets himself the kill with another Frostbite. And this Broodmother feels like it's getting shut down a bit uh, in the last couple minutes. I love playing Spirit Breaker against this hero, I gotta say. It feels so rewarding and so powerful that if Brood shows at any point, you get this connection. And Crystal Maiden is a great support to play it with in the early stages because you have this long root and slow. You see uh, Pichu in this game choosing to max out Frostbite, which we've seen sometimes. Um, it varies whether people prioritize Frostbite or Crystal Nova, but against the Brood, the root is just so good to allow a Sniper to get in all of that damage. Let's see if Monet skills Assassinate or not, because we've seen different Sniper builds here on level 6, whether you take that route at all, or if you focus on maxing out headshot. All right, oh, Boxy with the jump. Initiation, and that is enough burst damage, but Boca, charge, it's not in time. It's the humiliation. Mika gets credit for that kill. That is his first of the game. He has a haste rune still, and with the Falcon Blade, going for the BKB is a pretty fast item. Not to, he's getting chased with attack. just on the other side of the fog here. So Very good ward there. Catch up. Pichu will realize this. Like, he, he read that all too well, so. Gonna get the D ward, and they force out the glyph. Lesh will immediately rotate into mid. They don't want to lose their mid tower. Ori is gonna show here. Radiant. Yeah, well, Mickey is getting charged, so now there's TPs coming into the mid lane. See if we can get the LSA off. Oh, uses the horsey and gives himself enough distance to get away. But in the meantime, they're gonna find Boxy instead, who is trying to help out Mickey, but wasn't really needed in the end. <laughs> yeah, it looked like Boxy was trying to find an angle where he could maybe get a dispose onto the Lesh rack, but. What Aster did really well there was that they rotated not only the Lesh, but also the Crystal Maiden in the tree line. So when Foxy did try to go for that, it just gets Frostbitten from the side and does not find any move. At the very least, the good news for Liquid here. Bottom tower will be claimed. Brood is starting to build a new home here, uh, as Brood does. I wonder what build Zai goes here. We've seen a lot of Broods go this Arcane Boots into either Pipe or Wraith Pact, these kind of auras. Um, I assume this game will be no different, but I wonder what the priority will be. Pipe is pretty freaking good this game. Yeah, there is a lot of random magic damage, and it's a great way of keeping your spiders alive during fights. Yep, as he is taking control of the bottom lane, I mean, that's the one thing about transitioning out of this lane uh, against the Brood. He'll just take over, which he has done already. He has to be so line. careful with showing on the lane, though. He's actually showing his hero, and... That means he's opening himself up to being charged at any point. Yep, all they need is a little bit of vision here. Has a couple members of Aster in the cover of smoke, Zai in the trees, but his spidey senses are tingling for once that actually Quite makes literal. sense. <laughs> yep. Looks like he'll be okay, so a little bit of wasted time, although... Another... I have an idea that he's in the it's area. Waste here. Of the pops. Oh, 
Crystal Nova just off. Actually, it did connect, and now they have the vision. There's the charge from Baboka. In comes XSS as well. And that is a big kill on Zai. It took some time, but it worked out. And now XSS can just go back to where he came from. This is a pretty cool duo of heroes that we, like, never see played. The Spirit Breaker plus Underlord combo. You charge someone, you fiend skate in, and Spirit Breaker has that natural follow-up that he needs. This hero's... One of its weaknesses, even though it's one of the best roamers in the game, is that it doesn't really solo kill very well. Uh, but, you know, if you have something like Underlord connecting or Sudden Strike, like whatever it is at your disposal, then situations can suddenly look quite promising. Boboka with a charge, right, no rune here. Moxie is here. Nice pin of Malice, though, but the Dispose keeps XXS at bay. Already at half HP, and in comes the Lich as well. But look, four members of Aster are continuing on here as Insania gets off his Chain Frost. Looks like he will drop in the end as Machu has finally come to play, but the Laguna Blade on top of the rupture is enough to find himself a kill. Now the focus is on to Baboka, but the Sniper's gonna get the brother of the damage as Boxy gets the stun off, and Baboka will be next. Big turnaround here for Liquid. Great transition from Matu. And they make sure to bring the numbers there. Matu coming in, Lina with the double damage. It's just too overwhelming. And Mane yeah, would have probably been wise to not get involved there. You can understand why he's trying to help out his teammates, but Boxy isolates him with the rebound. Dispose combo, and once Sniper is repositioned, he's not getting out of there. Does not have any way of repositioning himself for now. Wonder if he's going to buy a shard later to try to help with that. But for now, obviously going a pretty standard route. Mask of Madness to Wraith Bands and Treads. Eyeing up the Dragonlance Pike. Another way to reposition, of course. And he should need it this game. Though. You gotta be feeling really good if you're liquid with that exchange, though. Yep, absolutely. The the lead has slipped into their side, just barely, though. Uh, as we get in, I'm gonna rehash this conversation again, Cinder. You know where I'm going with this, I'm sure, but... Uh, Tier 5 neutral. The old, <laughs> the old Roshan. Oh. As we're gonna see, Nether Strike onto Insania. Ori is in the air, he gets off the Lightning Storm. But the Frost Shield ends up mitigating a bit of damage here and forces the rest of Astro away as this is taking just too long. They get a high five for their efforts. Uh, which team would you say has the advantage in the Roche pit for both killing and fighting in the area? Uh, I guess for killing, I would imagine Liquid does it maybe a little bit faster. It's kind of close. Yeah, I'm going to rupture the damage. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I have a jump in two here. Mm -hmm. I think we can fight. Yeah, 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 I'm really sure. I'm really sure. Sniper, sniper, sniper. Okay. Fuck yeah, yeah, let's go. All right, that, that was an eternal envy type yeah. showdown. That was nice. They got done with their Naruto episode, and now they're playing. <laughs> so, good to see. Indeed. <laughs> anyway, you were saying about Roshan, Cinder. Yeah, so I think overall, I guess the dire... Scanning. Depending on... I Radiant guess it's level one side pick. It's kind of hard to say who's faster at it. I do like Aster's chances of fighting in the area in general, though. Underlord, Lesh, and Spirit Dyer's Breaker, as well as Shrapnel level attack. four. He's very, very good in that area. But I think neither team has any interest in even thinking about Roche for quite a while. Neither lineup is particularly good at it. There's a lot of risk involved. Boxy. We'll get charged. Charge in the top lane next to the tier two, but the Frost Shield comes out again. Chain Frost not really bouncing, but finally does off of the creeps, and that is going to cause Ori to drop. But Boca gets disposed. TP canceled. Second kill for Liquid. A big punish in this top lane. That Frost Shield has been <laughs> kind of pretty annoying for Aster to get through. Yeah, they also, they chose to go for that with five second cooldown on another strike. They didn't have Spirit Breaker old, Radiant's so missing that component, but also Liquid seemed like they just read that play like a book, you know. Mikke was in position immediately, getting that counter play. Nicely done from them, they get those two. Mikke now rocking a BKB. Is yep. very ready to fight. Liquid actually hitting a strong oh, time here. And oh, the through. horsey is there, he gets stunned and brought down. A huge kill for Liquid, but... XXS has come to play with his ult. Gets off the nice Pit of Malice and Firestorm and Sania. Looks to be the sacrifice at the very least, but Mickey and Matu want to continue to fight potentially. They're going to try to focus onto the Crystal Maiden and a nice stun from Boxy. Under two heroes with Mickey's LSA to follow. Four dead for Aster and Liquid. I mean, they got the big kill to start and Aster still wanted to fight and they get punished. Yeah, just Lesh didn't get to play his hero there. Got chain stun, completely rebound into the LSA, took the full burst there from Mickey, and they get that job done easily. You're gonna see on the replay here, it's a really nice way to open this with Boxy getting the rebound. They kill the sniper before any assistance arrives. 
as XXS comes in and does kill off the Lich, it's a pretty small consolation prize. Nice fear here, by the way, from Insanius. The boxy stun coming up soon. Yep. Which absolutely yeah. destroyed. Perfect. My Triple God. Triple stun into double stun. And that was the Bloodstone reveal as well on the Lash, and it just gets destroyed. Not literally. Not not a Kyle. Uh, but Baboka now in the bot lane. He's going for the Shadow Blade. As Zai again, he's just been chilling in the bot lane. Yeah. He's close to finishing his pipe, and we talked about the amount of magic damage that Aster has. That is going to be a huge pickup for them. Yeah, it seems like the, the play call here from Liquid is just leave Zai alone. Let him do whatever he wants. He needs to get that item before he really offers teamfight impact. Uh, curious to see what the idea is now. Is it's coming attack. out. Are you going to see a bigger rotation? Are we looking at a bottom tier 2 tower? Are we looking at a potential rotation into killing a hero mid and then getting Roche? There's plenty of options for Liquid here with the game state they have set themselves up for. And I mean, uh, essentially, if Zai doesn't have to join, why would he, right? He can also just keep farming down here and keeping yep. a Pestilence, forcing heroes to rotate down here and defend, putting pressure on the tower and just farming up get toward his next item. Uh, maybe an Axe could be on the menu. Extremely annoying item to play Spirit Breaker against the Brood Axe. So it definitely could be something he's considering. And Liquid want to keep up the aggression. Uh, Mickey now, or uh, the BKB from Matu. So two BKBs on the side of Liquid. And they are definitely ready to fight. as the Tier 2 Tower. They take a little bit of damage with XXS. He's going to show himself with the Firestorm, but Liquid want to kind of reset here. Uh, one thing we didn't really talk about is the fact that come these two obviously face in the upper bracket, and we've seen it so many times, the upper bracket team that wins, that faces the Radiance team again in the lower bracket. The lower bracket team ends up learning more about that matchup right. overall, and they got to see Tundra beat Aster as well. But potentially that's what we're seeing here right now, but standing under the high ground, he is so tanky at half HP, but he will be the sacrifice. As it looks like it's going to be a trade for the position fives. Nice freezing kill coming out, but it only delays the inevitable. Oh, they ruptured Lash. Yep, he gets his bloodstone off just in time as Matu pops the BKB, but the Lash is dead. Laguna Blade into the grave, and Baboka getting chased, but a nice pit of Malice keeping Boxy and company in this area. But the Dispose comes out on Baboka, but he does have the status resistance, and gets the charge off. That right click is coming for him. Is that enough? It doesn't look like it. He shall live. What an amazing escape from Baboka there, turning around to dodge the stun and then finding the charge through everyone to survive. I definitely had him expect a dead there, but he gets out of there. Still, the big kill for Liquid is the Lesh. They keep finding him every fight. Zai, okay. Yep, he's here all alone. Insania on the outskirts, but the Assassinate is coming, and that's not going to help you there. So Monet getting a nice pickup for himself as he... He's kind of struggling. He's middle of the pack in terms of net worth, and this is a hero that you do not want in that area. I mean, how much of a comeback mechanic do you have on this hero, would you feel, based on the items that he's going for? Because he has Mask of Madness, Dragon Lance, he's going for Hurricane Pike, so it feels like more mobility slash utility than damage. Yeah, I, I guess with this build, you definitely do farm slower than if you had, say, Mom Maelstrom, but you, you probably just have to get the pike at this time. If you go Mask Maelstrom, you just... It's going to take too long before you have the essential items to be any sort of presence in a team fight. And skirmishes, this is also a pretty good single target damage build, right? You have a long range, obviously you have the... You can activate the the take aim for the guaranteed headshots, which, by the way, are only level 2 on Monet currently, so his damage will ramp up significantly when he levels up to 13, 14. Oh, Matu getting charged, and there's a Fiend's Gate here as well. He pops the BKB, but still gets stunned. That is four members of Aster, and that is a nice pickup for them. Very nice team play, and now, I mean, the Fiend's Gate is so cool, but Nikke, he's in the area. He's in Viz right now. Both oh, the Alice does not connect, but they still get the stun. Laguna Blade to follow up with the Bloodstone, healing up a decent amount. The BKB popped by Mickey, and that is enough to take out Ori again. He's left by his team via the Fiend's Gate, and Liquid taking full advantage. Yeah, that missed stun from Mickey ends up costing him a BKB charge, but still well worth it. You're happy to get that kill. And probably the bottom tier 2 tower. I don't think you have a chance of defending this at as, as Aster. Well, they, maybe they are going to try it. Finally comes out, it's only going to connect a couple times, but Mickey looks to be mega dead, and Zai and company have to get the hell out of here. Insania is successful, but Zai inside the pit of Malice charged up, and it looks like he's going to be brought down as well, so Aster successfully defend the Tier 2 Tower.
it seems like Liquid had the same expectation that I did, that that tower was just going to be given to them with a dead Lash, but the crucial part in all of this is that Mickey with the miss stun ends up using the BKB on the first kill, and Astro are like, wait a minute, can't we just go on this guy and kill him with Spirit Breaker and Underlord? And they could. There wasn't enough protection there. I don't think there was a defensive dispose from Boxy to try to reposition and keep him alive. And that's huge for after. Yeah, we have a rupture onto XXS, but the rest of his team is coming. A nice charge on the two, but the blood right does connect. Silence that space, Cal. Oh but Boxy God. just getting right click from afar. And Matu, despite having to be KB, does have the move speed to get away. And no range for the assassin, or no vision for the assassin. They had any way of getting vision that could have been so much bigger for Aster, but they're very, very happy with this for sure. The game was starting to look a little bit scary for a while with the control that we were getting, but yeah. and the first Roche attempt is here. And Aster know that they're in a 5v4 situation. No BKB on Matumba either. Yeah. Bloodseeker is just not a very good hero in this time in the game when you don't have that BKB. It's so hard to run in and do anything. You can just get turned on and blasted. So as it looks, Liquid, I think they really want to try to poke at this, but it's just really difficult. They don't know the exact timing either. Every spider is getting killed outside the pit. Yeah. Looks like Monet will money. get the Aegis. Not putting on the Lesh. Your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good on both. Uh, a lot of the time we do see it on Lesh because you get so much value from getting the full mana refill when you die as well. But maybe the logic is Lesh is less susceptible to dying straight away. He has more health, he has the Bloodstone, whereas if Monet gets jumped, he can just die instantly. Uh, and this way you also maybe open up a little bit more for the potential of poking top tier 2 tower with just the Sniper. Lesh needs to go closer and expose himself to do that. Sniper can just safely take it from range, and if you do try to jump on him with your Marcy combination with Lina, you know he has that second life you have to worry about. Both those fours have four deaths each. Uh, for Monet and Ori, but they've kind of brought this game back center, and this is uh, net worth wise yeah. very even. And obviously, with the Aegis, it's going to help them potentially extend attack. that just a bit. As the tier 2 tower is not being defended yet. And I, I think it is, worth, it is worth keeping in mind for a game like this that a lot of the expectation of how the game goes kind of rides or dies with Rude, right? And Zai's impact aside from, you know, pushing out this bottom lane being there has not really, it has not felt like Rude has been a first phase hero, right? Or arguably it has because Astra solved it so well. A lot of Liquid's Brood game wins, they would be in a much, much better position Dyer's than this now. And I think fallen. even at just in an even game Radiant's state like this in terms of gold, the Radiant lineup carried. is having a pretty solid time scaling late game. I think a lot of what Brood offers becomes less and less important against this lineup. Uh, whereas Astra's lineup is just going to scale to the moon, right? Sniper, Underlord, Lesh, Tricor. That is true. Raid it's, Pack uh, has been there for a strong. little bit on the Underlord, as we see a full smoke here from Aster. And we can see that they are trying to go into the enemy triangle is the question. As a four staff picked up from from Mickey, actually, so yep. he's going to the full hurricane fight as well. He sold it again. The way. Did he? Yep. Oh, okay. Changed his mind for now. He's still oh he's changing over to Silver Edge. Okay, so. I guess he wants the break for Atrophy Aura. Um, oh, and and they need some more damage. He's going to get spotted, charge, right click, dead. Easy kill for Aster. See if they go for this tier 2 tower bottom now that they have the top. Or if they're just happy to farm away. I mean, how important is it for Aster to use this Aegis in an effective way? Or are they fine just farming? Like you said, they do technically scale better. Yeah, I, I think they're fine farming, but I wouldn't mind seeing them trying to use this Aegis for another tier 2 tower. Uh, probably mid is the most accessible one for them right now, because I think Brood really thrives in the killed. bottom tower area. There's so much, so many trees, so many angles you can find there to be annoying for the support. But oh, he changed his mind again. He went hurricane. <laughs> oh, he changed again. All right. Well, maybe the gold lined up nicely. Dyer's bottom tower Liquid are not too faced by the Aegis, though. They're still going to... Look to cross the river and maybe make an aggressive move. They do have a double damage on Mickey, which would be really nice for them to put to use. But Boku will push out that wave and reposition himself. It looks like Astra are aware that Liquid have some big plan here. Ori also farming very defensively over on the ancient side, making sure to stay all the way left to not get caught. And this move from Liquid will... It will bear fruit in the sense they get some good aggressive wards out. You see they get the good ward over at the Radiant Triangle. Um, and they get a good ward down in mid, so definitely looking for some sort of catch 
against the Aegis team at some point in the near future. But it looks like they'll have to settle for Mick Aegis, you know, 10-shotting the top tier one tower casually with sidekick and double damage. Packing 400 damage with that per hit. Not bad, but now it's run out. And Aster will... They will opt for the bottom tower rather than the mid one. This was the one they had the option to access. I think they would have been happy to take mid, but that's where Liquid were grouped up and covering the lane. So they will settle for a trade in the off lanes. And they will get it successfully. So 2k lead for Aster is the Aegis. Okay. It's They're expiring in 40 it. seconds. Yeah. They will knock on the Hydra. Oh, oh. Sniper very good at this. Obviously, massive range. The only repositioning tool Liquid have is, aside from an offensive pike from Mickey, which is probably a bit naive to think it's going to happen. You have level 2 disposed. So he's feeling pretty damn safe standing down here hitting this tower. You just keep throwing out one shrapnel if you want to hit it some more. There we go. He's going to keep poking at it. Now pop the map and Ori. The defense is coming for Liquid. Ori up in front. He's going to get ruptured. Pops the BKB. That's not going to do too much for him. But he's Radiant kept himself away top far top enough as the Aegis is expiring in three seconds. Trying to get through the Fiend's Gate. He does so successfully. And Aster retreat. In part. Still a couple members here. Yep. And Ori can just refill and... Oh, okay. Does not want to take the Fiend's Gate. Wants to farm up mid. I'm surprised Ori went in an edict at that tower. I think letting Sniper just keep doing uh, doing his thing was, was pretty good. It only cost him if he could be charged, which isn't the end of the world. And I guess he did force the glyph, so maybe it's okay. Uh, but if Liquid find a move off it, the story will be very, very different. Ori is going to walk Laguna Blade, but no LSA connection, but they still find the Crystal Maiden nonetheless. The right clicks are way too much. BKB already popped by Matu as they find the kill onto Ori. So three dead overall, the complete segregation of that fight, but Liquid coming out way on top. Yeah, so what ends up happening there is Lesh has BKB cooldown from bottom, and he's walking in in the mid lane together with Spirit Breaker. I think a pretty crucial mistake there from Aster, actually. The two heroes were even stacking up, so they got chain stunned and didn't get a charge up to try to protect Ori. He just walked straight into Matsu, got ruptured and killed, and or actually didn't even rupture, I think. They just they just hit him. <laughs> he could get away anyway without the BKB. I able to clean up clean. to tier 2 mid. That is a huge swing for Liquid. And we won't know for the next Roche for another minute 40, but that is going to be an extremely important factor in this game, as it usually is. Uh, but looking at Ori's item progression, obviously they've had the Bloodstone for a long time. BKB is on 8 seconds. He's only used it once, surprisingly. Yep. Has the casual plate mail. And I would assume an eventual Shiva's, but still going for his boots of travel. I mean, his farm for a lash is not very good this game. No, I, I think he's had a couple of, of times maybe pushing one wave too many, and Liquid have done a really good job punishing him. Uh, overall, the five deaths on the lash is is a major setback. You compare that to Mickey on the Lina with only two, has a 50 CS advantage because of this. Um, the thing I wonder here for Ori is if travel is actually the right choice because you're obviously playing against Rupture, right? So having extra mobility in the fight isn't necessarily going to translate to more safety or more damage. Whereas having items where you can just stand your ground and survive longer, like we said, the Shiva or something to that effect could be an interesting choice. But maybe even Mags could be a thing this game. You're against Brood, Bloodseeker, and an attack damage Lina build. Nihilism. I think Nihilism could be interesting, but well, for now it is going to be the travels. And obviously, it depends whether the flow of the game will turn into a little bit more of a stalemate where the teams are just pushing out waves and farming because then travels are obviously great. But if we have a key fight coming up sometime soon, this might not be the best allocation of net worth that Ori can have at this point in time. Um, getting those travels up. Roche will be known to us now. It's a long respawn. Yes. 2.33. Will be quite a while before Aster potentially get their hands on that. And I do say Aster because they are controlling the area for now. And they did get the first one. There's no saying that Liquid can't make a team move in there and, and contest it. And Zai's Matu has his Mjolnir now. Uh, Zai has had the Wraith Pact. And pipe, the Ags And is going up. for Aghanim Scepter. Spinner Snare, really. Yeah, it is very good. It's Ags. When you're playing a brood role where you don't have to deal very much damage, this this axe is just incredible for map control. Smoke up, but they see Boxy. They're going to start charging him next to Liquid's 
Outpost technically in control of Asher right now. The Charger's there, but the Frost is going to keep him healthy for the time being. Ori, though, and Baboka end up taking him out with the help of Monet. Just like that, it's a 5v4, but BKB already popped by XXS as they find Zai in the trees, but the charge onto Matu. See who they try to focus here. Firestorm doing a lot of percentage-based damage. Lich ult coming out, but it's only going to bounce once as Zai just gets cleaned up. Double kill for Monet as the Fiend Gates back to the fountain. They can just refresh and rejoin this fight as Insania looks to be next. Three dead for Liquid. And Aster looking very good now, but like you said, Roche is not going to be up for another minute, so yeah, they can't take can. advantage of that. Definitely consider themselves lucky that this isn't up because this would have been an easy collateral for Aster Ward, would have forced two buybacks out of Liquid. But yeah, just a very different fight in terms of positioning here, right? So you get the charge onto the Marcy, so she doesn't get to play the fight at all. Aura gets ruptured, they get this Marcy kill, they run back, and then they zone control. Underlord is creating tons of space by just running in with a pit of malice and just frontlining. Sniper is keeping them at bay with shrapnels. There's the Crystal Maiden ult coming up. It's just too difficult for Liquid to re-engage here. And a nicely played fight here from Aster will secure themselves a good position in the game once again. And the control of the pit, 30 second respawn on that. Both teams will want to get access to this. This is the second Roche, so we'll come with a little bit of a bonus. And Mickey has the Daedalus, so he will start to hurt. Uh, he's opting to go for a Lincoln Sphere as the next item. Okay, that's uh, I like that approach too. You know, you're you're feeling a lot safer against the against the rupture. You get yourself that freedom of movement. Well, the rupture's on his team. Oh, I was looking at the Lesh. He's also going Lincoln. Oh, yeah, that one makes sense. Oh, I'm trying to figure out this. Everybody gets a Lincoln. <laughs> The charge is very annoying. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, the only way to take full advantage of that, uh, if you're the Spirit Breaker, is to get an Ags, which is, he is going for. Is so the Lincolns attack. won't be that big of a deal at that point. Master, so we have a smoke down from Liquid. Master poked the Roche and went out. So they feel like Liquid are going to come contest this, and they are very right. The top lane is all the way in the tier three tower, and no one from Liquid's defending. This is a dead giveaway that Liquid are up to something here. Roche Aster has a load the same. Scanning. Boboka is terrifying with that Shadow Blade that he's had for a while. If they get vision on anyone, they could just get stunned out of nowhere on Liquid's side with very minimal defense, except like we talked Radiant's about the Frost Shield, but it doesn't really save you from this Radiant lineup very well. Yep, yeah, Ori already used his mid. Bloodstone, thinking that he was going to get jumped, so another 15 second cooldown on that. Uh, we'll find the ward. And very tense as both teams know that Roche is up. With the gem, knows that Liquid have vision here. Obviously not going to go for the D ward. Way too risky. He could get jumped by Marcy and just blast it there. So gets the information, gets back. They have Boboka clean up mid with a charge. Next wave will now be cut by Boboka as well. Going to clean this up out of the Shadow Blade, just killing all of those spiders in one charge. Yeah, ever since they it's changed feel the, really good. his bash to do that much damage to creeps. Uh... Yeah. Very, even better counter. I think this is the most CS I've seen a Spirit Breaker have been at 34 since Xiao 8 played at mid. Um, that's what Spiders will do for you. That is true. I mean, he's halfway to his Ags, and that yeah. thing is crazy how good. Yep. Invisibility. Still posturing on the other side of the map. <laughs> no one quite ready to fight, knowing that this Roche could potentially decide the game. I mean, it's a little early to call that, but... There's a very good chance that the win percentage with second Roche has got to be really high for the team that gets it. As look how close this game was. <laughs> yeah. 68% for Aster. Would you do you feel that? I'm watching this right now as the rupture oh. onto Ori gets disposed. Ori at half HP is going to get fast as the mouth to try to regulate the play. Blood Soul is not going to be enough. A one for one, but it's a support for a mid and Liquid trying to reset. Now the box is on relatively low HP. Dispose onto Matu with the rebound movement speed buff as well. They're able to reset completely. And the buyback from Insania, a 5v4 situation effectively here. Lesh has buyback too, but no BKB ready. So if he connects, he has to be careful. The trade-off here, of course, Liquid using two of theirs, Marcy and Bloodseeker with a minute cooldown, and Aster are actually confident that this is enough for them to contest the pit. They know they can buy back their Lesh. What can you travel on? They have the outpost too, yeah. so the connection point is there. Ooh, Monet, double damage as well. 
McKay oh, inside the, the pit of Malice gets four staff to safety, but they're gonna find a space cow first. Laguna Blade on the XXS. A nice chain frost bouncing as XXS still has the BKB activated. Siamese Cat looks to be next on the list, but double buybacks now from Aster, and they can reconnect relatively quickly. Especially wants to put a Fiend's Gate there. Still 5v5, but that is several buybacks from Aster. But like you said, the BKB is very important for Liquid to oh, charge man. on the Mickey. But the Frost Shield is going to be able to get a lot of his physical damage. Boxy is going to be dead, trying to help his teammate. And Mickey pops the BKB, trying to get the die back onto Ori. He's at half HP, but the Bloodstone healing up to a high degree. It's not going to be enough. Ori diebacks and Monet stuck in. So what is it? He's just stuck there, trying to right click his way out of this. Getting some life steal now. But Zai, is he going to be able to take him out in the end? It's going to be close. Monet is still life stealing. Despite just standing still for the last 30 seconds, Matu has already died, and now Baboka trying to chase the lit. But there's a rebound. Mickey gets instantly stunned. Disposed back. They kill Monet. Finally, he buys back into the game, though. And now the Unleash going to town on XSS, who's bought back himself as well. Looks like Broodmother is next here, though. And now this has turned into a three versus two, technically in favor of Aster. But Baboka dies. That's another dieback for him. Boxy teeping away. He is successful. 6K lead for Liquid. What the hell was that fight? It's <laughs> <laughs> actually completely insane. If Aster do end up claiming this, I guess they're somewhat okay with what they had to throw for that. They spent how many buybacks was that? I kind of lost the whole A lot. Result. I mean, this isn't even accurate. Four buybacks, yeah. I believe, from Aster used in this situation. Obviously, they had to buy back Ori in the beginning. So again, Ori really oh, not progressing they too much. They want to go. They have the rebound available. Roche is relatively low. The Frost Shield oh, is there, but a nice pit of Malice. Going to root that. But Foxy gets into the pit. He gets to this pose off. Who gets the Roche is the question. Nobody wants to kill it. And finally, Monet, he snatches the Aegis. So technically, Liquid get the kill. Not sure who got the shard on top of that, but either way, Aster is happy with this exchange. Looks like Boxy, <laughs> did he actually take the shard? Boxy grabbed it and in a fit of panic, he used it instantly. I don't think... Oh, no. I don't think that's the best shard they could have used there. Maybe... Uh, what are the other options? Brood or Lina? Yeah, maybe. It's actually... Yeah, it might, might be fine, actually. Now they have a save that they haven't had before. They can obviously rebound the target away. All right, yeah, right. Not able to hit the LSA there, but... Wow. I mean, Damn. honestly, the craziest thing about the team fight that we just saw was how long Monet stayed alive, right? It's because he's getting Crimson guarded by the Underlords, so the spiders do zero damage. Zai has a zero damage item build, so he's basically tickling him. And Monet was just using Mask of Madness, standing still and <laughs> pressing A click on the ground. I've never seen a sniper stand still for that amount of time. And we have some more action, it looks like, potentially. Rupture. But Zai is kind of stuck. He's going to get charged at his XXX. He's taking the front of the damage from Matu. He's going to get bashed up, but we'll be able to get the Fiend's Gate out in time. As Liquid just don't have the damage right now, but Zai, he gets charged in on into the Nether Strike and into the right clicks of Monet. And now with the assault onto XXS, he's going to add insult to injury, and his push will be even faster for Aster. No pun, I mean, that was a rhyme. Intended. Tier 2 tower looks to be done. How much more can they get? Still three and a half minutes on the Aegis. 50 seconds on Root as well. Yep. And uh, Zai does not have buyback gold. They do not know this for a fact, but they might have a feeling based on the Aghanim Scepter being purchased that he cannot reconnect to this fight. Still, you have to be a little bit careful about this high ground push. Marcy is very terrifying on defense, and as we've already established, Boxy with the dagger doesn't even need to rebound in. He can flank in and dispose and rebound out to maybe force a BKB. He can obviously also rebound in and dispose and then blink out if he's fast enough. If it takes any damage, that is not happening. He can rebound his teammates. He Very can also important. do that. He could rebound Mickey in and lose the game. That is another I mean, option he has. We, we have seen it during the DPC. We have seen the Marcy Shard win games and lose games. Come on, Boxy. Abibi! I'm keeping over. I'm keeping over. I can't get it. I can't get it. And Zania yeah. counting the buybacks there. Yeah. It's Wonder if he to... counted all of them and wrote down all the times. That would be very impressive. That would be inhuman, as a matter of fact. Indeed. It's nice to have a human calculator on your team, as I'm sure you can attest to. Yep. I have that every game. Well, two minutes still on the Aegis for Aster. But Liquid, in terms of net worth, have a very slight lead right now. An incredibly close game. Didi is bottled for Monet, and I'm sure 
that they're going to want to use it here to at least get a tier 3, if not, yeah. try to get a barracks. That bottom lane is very, very open. Minute 50. I don't know how much is left on the bottle. When did you pick that up? So if you picked it up around 40, it might have been sitting there for a little bit, but should have enough time to maybe connect on a wave. The spinner snares are starting to make life difficult for Aster. <laughs> Very annoying. Uh, Techies was deleted, but uh, I actually think lives on in Brood. I was saying this is kind of the new old Techies, the spinner <laughs> snare. It is incredibly annoying to play against. Don't underestimate how much the mental means, but well, no snares bottom just yet. Monet pumps the DD. Force out the glyph. They will get another glyph after this tower falls, mind you, with the changes. So Liquid do have another round of defense with the barracks. Here are you finally down. Yeah, Monet's attack speed is nothing to scoff at. He's got a lot of attack speed items that have the AC on the Underlord, Mask of Madness activation. It's looking pretty good for Aster. This is a big moment now. Liquid will try to find perhaps an angle. Just pushing out mid for now. Do they even have any smokes left? They do not. Yeah, they do. They have one unboxing. So if Liquid do want to challenge something here, they can. But it's a very, very difficult position to access yourself into. Yeah, you keep scouting them with Spinner Snare, though. Oh, my name. Well, we can't flip another one. No, nope. XXS, however. They'll find another Spinner Snare. I'm sure he's having a great time there. <laughs> They're smoked up, but he knows, right? It, it yep. notifies them. Yep. <laughs> this is not happening. That is actually hilarious, man. I think yeah. it's my first game casting uh, Brood Axe. It's one of those things that's hilarious to watch, and then you're imagining yes. being a player on Aster. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. That's, uh, but that's Dota, right? It is very annoying, let me tell you. All right, Liquid. It's, it's time. It's just, age is expiring just now. Aster will place XXS to cover the high ground. Uh, they jump in. him. He, they know they get the bash up, and Monet is right clicking from afar. Vicky Bot to BKB gets a Laguna Blade, and now they jump on top of Monet and kill him immediately. No buyback for him. And Baboka now stuck between a rock and a hard place at the second. Make it three for Mickey. What a fight. What an initiation with no vision, I'm pretty sure. Not able to get the rebound. Boxy has been playing out of his mind. And now down the mid lane, Liquid goes with a 7k lead, knowing that a lot of these buybacks will not be available. Only the Underlord at the moment. And you just love the confidence from Boxy, right? The smoke breaks, he instantly just blinks up blindly and pops his ult in BKB. Finds a target, the fight breaks out. And Monet tries to come in and help, but they just destroyed him with Marcy Lina. He didn't even get to play the fight. Probably felt relatively confident it was Butterfly that he had something to stand his ground with, but just not the case. Liquid, are they actually just gonna go for it? They're gonna try to go for the They know that Sniper's not back for 60 seconds. Tier 4 is already at half HP. They're gonna be able to take it out pretty swiftly. Can Aster actually defend this in a 3v5 situation? Finally, the fortification is popped. They won't have one for the rest of the game in all likelihood if they continue down this mid lane. Unleash is popped for Boxy, just priming and ready to go. One tier four down. Will Liquid continue on here? 33 seconds on Monet. Crimson Guard is trying to mitigate a little bit of damage here. But there's the initiation on XS. They get the, the rupture on it. They force staff him as well, but he's going to live inside the fountain. But the tier four goes down as well. And now on to the Ancient Ori. Pops a BKB and Bloodstone, but the focus is now on to the Ancient for Liquid. All they have to do is right click that they'll get game one. Charging oh, from Aboka. Pretty big, but making continue right click with the Dana. That's going to be enough. Liquid take game one. Unbelievable. I don't know how this team continues to give everybody heart attacks around the world. Do you believe that this is the power you need to come back in the series? 其實全能在本次比賽當中並沒有選了很多,你對自己的全能有沒有信心,信不信他?我不信他我也不會選出來吧。Why <笑> would I pick him if I don't believe in him? Yeah, baby, all right. And I just wanted to give you a moment here with the crowd. Of course, the crowd is cheering for you. They love you. I want you to have your last moment. So take it away. Say whatever you want to say. 现场观众有很多人都替你们打气,有没有什么想跟他们说的? 希望兄弟们打气的那个声音再大一点,我在里面听不到,好吧。Can you guys cheer louder, because I can't hear you? Oh, we want you to cheer louder! Can we give him one more before he gets into the game, Singapore? I think that's pretty loud enough. All right, we'll throw it back to our casters.
Thanks, Slax and Lanam, Cinderin with Sunspan. You're welcome. Hello, Sunspan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Liquid versus Aster, game number two. And we're going to see a the Matu Morph, games. as we already discussed. We're going to see the Omni Knight support, which is a hero that didn't exist until recently, it feels like. Tell me what this hero offers. Yeah, so Omni usually will on level one skill Hammer of Purity, which is also what he has done here. So it's his training ability in lane. You just do some damage and effectively trade HP off. You bring your tangos yourself and you try to trade with either the enemy support or the enemy offlane or whatever is better. And then later. Oh! Okay. That's a start from Ori. Yep, the hook looks good. He's all warmed up from game number one. Yep. Like, um, just give me Pudge. This is an elimination game. Give me Pudge. I want to have fun. I, I will say, t to be honest, this has been one of Ori's most impressive heroes to watch this year. Uh, after it became relevant as a core hero, he's been one of the standout players on it. So I think Aster will feel confident having him running that. To finish off on the Omni thought, aside from this early laning trading that he does here with Boxy, who's pulling the wave, uh, what Omni is going to offer is a lot of defense. It's one of the most defensive supports in the game. You have a strong heal, you have a dispel that gives regen, and your ulti, obviously, the full physical block, which Liquid have done a very good job at, you know, with their lineup, they have solutions oh. for Guardian Angel. Okay, okay. Ori. Yeah, he pops the fairy fire, so he's going to live as a result. Matu getting pretty low in the bottom lane, and Zai getting low in the top lane. And if Action in all three. Seeker in this lane, he would have oh, a million yeah. move speed right now, but... Uh, talk to me about the, the mid matchup. So Ori on the Pudge, Mickey on the Storm Spirit. Pudge is just, I mean, we've talked about this hero a lot, but uh, very level dependent. Yeah. And the fact that he's being played in core really bene uh, gets benefited from his passive, which is now an active. He has great base damage. He can write good attack animation. Like It's really hard to deal with this hero. I think, I think this lane is pretty dangerous for Storm because if you do get hooked, you have no way of repositioning yourself. You have 285 move speed, so you can never outrange the Pudge. Yeah. Even if you Vortex, the slow isn't enough. Slow yourself. So um, it's, it's kind of a balancing lane where Pudge needs to gauge whether he can go for a kill or not. Um, and if he can and lands a hook, it probably just gets it. Oh, boy. Insane. Insane. Uh, yeah, dispose and first blood this time goes to Aster. Look at that. It's the same as last game. Marcy jumps Maiden and kills her in the same place. Marcy is, I mean, I we talked about it. Wait, Primal Beast wasn't banned at all? Or was nope. that in the second? He was ignored, just I completely think. completely ignored. Wow. I believe so. Yeah, Primal Beast and Marcy, we were both expecting to be the most picked slash banned. But uh, to get through uh, at this late in the tournament, shocking. Yeah, and it, oh, there's that trade-off. Ori, Ori going Ori for Ori with it. the rod. We got a TP coming in. But Boxy is a little too late. Gets the ice shards off. He's level Water one, rune though. is popped by Ori. And it looks like he's fine. Wants a high five. Will he get a high five back? No, Boxy's just focusing on CS. Oh, this is concerning for Liquid. Once Ori gets going on this hero, he has the ability to completely take over games. He's gonna now go and get the bounty rune for a refill. Oh, oh yeah. Also gonna hook the centaur for some added benefit. Great. He's gonna get a tango, a heavenly grace. Everything to make good old Pudge happy here, and yep, Dyer's that solo kill mid is enormous. Attack. He's 600 net worth now ahead of that Storm, and the level advantage is nothing to ignore either. When Storm hits six after Pudge, he's constantly at risk. Any connection on a hook is a kill. You can even just walk up and dismember him if the lane positioning is unfortunate for Mikro. He's not paying attention or being careful enough all the time. Um, yeah, it's it's scary. This mid lane start for Liquid and this definitely is not even taking over. into account that there's a Marcy on your team that has not even bothered to help out in mid lane because they don't need to because he's winning that and now they're going to go on top of Insania again as Matu trying to deal some damage to Boboka but it looks like Insania will be the death for Liquid again 0 and 2 thus far in this lane. Yeah, Made Morph just. Not the strongest of lanes, especially in the early levels. Uh, Liquid obviously acknowledging that Morphling has a good core game, uh, but the Marcy Jakira lane, insanely strong matchup. Like, you're gonna hit level three now as well, Ori will. Oh, the water Zai, will. they're gonna go on top of the Monet here. Looks like they'll find the kill first before Zai ends up being the trade. So, favoring Liquid here. Yeah. Siamese Cat just trying to harass Boxy away. All the XXS tries to go for a cheeky rebound play, but Matu, as long as you get that strength off, you're not going to die in all likelihood here. And Ori, like you said, level five, almost level five and a half, as Mickey just hits level five now, so he will have a kill opportunity. Let's see how passive Mickey will be at that point. Mane is doing some serious damage to Boxy, not enough though. 
mean, yeah, this this lane from Liquid, it, it, it's really fun to watch this lane because it feels so different from most of what we've seen. Not the Lesh Tusk is pretty common, right? But the Omni Sniper might be the first time this tournament, this lane is even played. I would imagine. Um, it's it's very special in the sense that Sniper has basically no way of repositioning himself, but Omni can make you strong enough to maybe stand your ground even against Tusk Lesh, as long as there's creeps around that can eat part of the edict, which. By the way, Zai isn't even skilling. He's going Lightning Storm stun for now, but Edict Radiant will be coming later. Um, perhaps it's enough? It's... Let us fight. I also wonder how comfortable Liquid are playing against this matchup and Omni in general. Foxy! He's in a rough spot. Gets off a nice ice shards, though. Foxy, one of the best Tusk players in the world, of course. We've seen this time and time again. Looking certain death in the eye as uh, poke onto the range creep. <laughs> And Might have wanted the siege actually, but yeah, possibly. Either way, the next creep should get him to level six, and that is where Mickey has to be extremely careful. But Ori's taking a lot of damage here, so we'll see. He has ten wand charges right now. It is power rune time, though. Yeah, there six. it is. And he's going right, to go for go it right away. Immediately, here comes the snowball to try to cancel, but the damage is already done. And Mickey, another TP to come out from Insania. Mickey dies first, though, as Baboka is the one technically getting credit for that one. Zai, in the meantime has to TP back to Fountain in the top lane. Yeah, so the trade-off here is it's a one-for-one -one kill, but Liquid have to bring two supports mid to get the trade, and obviously that leaves their side lanes exposed, and Aster identify that and immediately take advantage of that top. Lesh is not a good hero 1v2. This hero thrives on playing with ideally a melee 4 that can set him up and tank some damage, go first. Once that's out of the window, even a lane like Sniper Omni can actually just bully you out. Put on a little bit of a hammer of purity and a shrapnel and just run Lesh down and he has to back, so... Talk to me about... Back to Pudge, of course. Uh, cause yeah, stop talking about this fat guy, but... Understandable. Uh, Ori has his phase boots. He's going for the casual cloak into Ag. That's really fast. Yeah. Is that because he's owning right now? Uh, it's that and he has Omni, right? I think that, yeah, that's that extra layer of protection really helps in, in speeding up your hero going for a faster pace, so... I don't mind it. Uh, we've seen some different builds on Pudge. We've seen Blink Rush was popularized, uh, especially in the China region earlier this year. Uh, Cloak into Ag has been run without Omni well. as well, so it's not like the first time. We've seen Hood into Ag. We'll see. If he dies once, he might just buy a Hood for value. Uh, yeah. But as long as he's balling like this, I mean, he has died once. If he dies again. Uh, yeah, but that death, it was it was a good trade. It was a trade. They it got the Radiant's XP. Oh, close attack. to hitting that hook on Mickey. Had the ward seeing Mickey's movement, which he's now going to ping, he's like, why on earth would Ori ever hook here unless he saw me on a ward? Yeah. Uh, but Ori did not count correctly with the... Didn't account for Storm's slow movement speed and, and threw the hook out too early. Mickey obviously not even having boots. We'll make that movement. Imagine being that slow and it benefiting you as Mickey gets out the Electric Vortex boxes here as well. Ice Shards to connect onto Ori. He's stuck here. Gets off the hook, though. Instantly cancel on the Dismember, so no kill comes out from Aster this time. But that is oh, a haste rune. rune. Oh, this rune is insane on Pudge. Indeed. And just like that, Mickey zips as far away as he can, knowing that he can't really contest here. Ori's going to see Boxy. He might just go for it. No, it's not. It's not so, this time. Keep in mind, uh, Ori's going for a pretty standard Pudge build here. He's going 1 3 2, which means when he activates Flesh Heap, it blocks all of the self damage from Rot. This spell gains so much from the second point. Uh, and when you have that haste rune, you can just run at people with Rot and Flesh Heap on the duration, usually enough to find a key kill in a fight. Oh, so you've got to be very, very careful as Liquid around the map right now. Yep, and they actually just drew, I believe that was Boxy. They know that this, is, this gank attempt is happening. Zai TP's out. Oh, see, I'm really impressed. Good attempt from Ori. Yeah, good read. Pop the haste now and get back to mid. Great read from Zai to TP there. Because I think a lot of players in that situation just start running and probably get out from running aside from the obviously Pudge connection there. Um, so he knew that that was a haste play coming in when Sniper started playing aggro and instantly TP'd away. So well done. Still a very Aster favored early game. Last game was a lot more even at this point. Um, yeah, but with scary. all this. Uh, this movement, it's kind of created some space here for Monty to catch up a bit. He's top two net worth right now. So he's off to a pretty good start. He, of course, went for... Oh, he's going straight Lincolns right away. First Radiant's item. This is, is under like attack. super old school. It's pretty old school. That's not a build we see rebound right now. Sania is eventually, surely, surely Crystal Maiden doesn't run away from somebody. 
surely he is dead. They want Ori to try to get these flesh heap stacks. The hook connects, and Ori gets another flesh heap stack to his name, which is now at three. But yeah, that might Lincoln. be the longest that made the escape from Tank ever. <laughs> so that was like, I thought it was slow motion at first. Yeah. Oh, Big zip in Boboka. with a connection from Boxy. They're focusing on Boboka. They get him. Make it a little bit low on mana as Ori is now TP'd in. Looking for a connection of their own. Faking the hook. Not going to go for it. That was with the power rune pick up from Mickey. He got a double damage and that enabled that play to be very swift. So immediately converting that to a support kill. Not the biggest, but it's still nice for Liquid to force rotation, if nothing else, from Aster. They do get the TPs in toward mid, which I think arguably are worth more than the kill itself in that instance. Just getting Ori as well as Pichu's TPs on cooldown, which could potentially open up for something here up top. Boxy is thinking about it. He's getting level 6 from the next creep in Fog. But Pichu in a very good position here, covering Monet, and it is a difficult kill. Keep in mind, if he heavily Radiant's grazes at the right time and attack. removes multiple abilities, Monet just gets that bit stronger. That could keep him alive. He also has Raindrop and a decently charged up one. So this play probably does not actually exist for Liquid. Hook, Matsu with a quick wave form. They could just go for the tier one tower. On top of the Omni Knight, potentially. <clears throat> Gets off the handle of the Grace, but Boxy, he's the one kind of isolated right now. The Snowball is going to buy him a little bit of time, but he's just going to get right clicked by Monet. So a really easy kill here for Master. And yeah, and Liquid even brought a Maiden for that just to die in a 2v3. That feels really bad. Um, you're the one allocating resources to try to threaten the Sniper, and he's just standing his ground, showing to be way too powerful with the Omni Knight behind. Uh, you kind of settled for trying to go on the Omni, but just not possible. Oh, we got Ori. He's gonna get the dismember up, but that's against another punch named Matu. Trying to get off a little bit of damage here, but he's gonna get Ice Path inside the macro pyre, hook back into the fray, and down goes Matu. Zip back in, but now the Heavenly Grace comes out as Mikke has to walk away in shame. Aster here in numbers. Not sure if they see Insania, but... Radiant's bottom yeah, he's got no resources left. He's a pig. Oh, this is one way Maiden can escape for yeah. a few seconds, but now she's... Oh, potential! Oh! Crystal Maiden jukes in slow motion, but XXS is here. And again, the longest chase of Insania's life, but he created a little bit of space. Hey, you'd think it's impossible for him to beat his record from two minutes ago, but here we are. <laughs> he actually kited them for a good half minute there. That... If you're a maiden, you take that. That feels pretty good, actually. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Splitter the connection. There's Matu coming in with the waveform. Monet's just going to get right clicked down in Oblivion, but Ori is coming into the fray as well. He's going to get stunned right off the bat as it's a 3 view versus 1 against this tanky Pudge. Splitter connects. This is going to be a huge kill for Liquid if they're able to grab him, and it looks like they will. A little bit late on the Heavenly Grace for Siamese Cat. So two core kills for Liquid. Yeah, and a tower. That could not have gone any better. And not a ganking duo you would expect in that instance as Monet. It's the Lesh Morph gank in the side lane. And the TP too late from Ori and Omni Knight did not have one, I believe, so couldn't show up and protect in time. A big moment for Liquid, just recovering a lot of their early game deficit there. With one swift move, they find two cores in a tower. Doesn't get much better than that. That was a savior friend syndrome yep. domino effect. Something, something. But. On the bright side for Aster, Ori is more than halfway to his Ags, and once he gets that uh, against a Lesh, against a Morph, it still works that way in Morph, right? The health reduction. I actually can't remember anymore. Yeah, that was it, changed. It, it should it should favor Aster. So a really good Pudge Ags game. Oh, okay. I'll cancel the Pudge out there. I'll cancel it. I think we can kill him too. Sorry? No cancel anymore. Yes, thing is running out. Yeah. Yes, we can get it, yeah. boys. I said only top two, only top two. They sound very happy all the time, don't they? They do. I mean, it did win game one. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That'll help. Indeed. Go, man. Nice path not able to connect here. Radiance uh, but yeah, I mean, this this game was definitely Aster favor, but that one move, it felt like it brought Liquid back into the game, and it's essentially even for net worth wise, at least. Uh, you can see Zai still working on the Bloodstone. Obviously, position three is not going to farm nearly as fast as the usual mids that we've been seeing. Uh, Mickey 
getting relatively close to finishing the Sage Kaya. And of course, on Matu's side, let's go back to this Lincoln Spear. This is like a Dota 1 classic. Literally every game you buy this first item. And then early games of Dota 2, it kind of transitioned over and then disappeared pretty much. I don't remember why at this point. More items were added. Yeah, a lot of the times you would see now, I think most Morphlings buy Falcon Blade into something else than Lincoln's. There's like plenty of item builds you can go on this hero, but I'm just looking for the reasoning for the Lincoln's. If it's, is it Dismember? Is it Dismember? Oh, Mickey zips okay. in, but there's three members of Aster. He doesn't seem to give a crap about it. There goes the Guardian Angel, and Mickey's just going to get punished right off the bat. And Aster, super happy with this exchange as Insania. <laughs> baiting them into a potential chase of the lifetime again, but they will give up on that. You just, you can't underestimate how much Omni does in these situations. If you're jumping a support and you're like, man, he's low, I can get this kill. Omni casts Heavenly Grace and a level one purification and Boboka all of a sudden wasn't even remotely close to dying. Yeah. But Mickey needs backup. This is not the greatest storm game to solo kill in because the enemy supports are actually relatively tanky, right? There's a Jakiro, there's an Omni. Dyer's middle if you want to get a solo kill on either, you really have to burst your entire mana pool away and then you might not even be able to get out afterwards, so. Might have had Radiant's to wait for the Sanjikai there. Tower. That could have made the difference, potentially. I'm already destroying an illusion here as we're gonna see a bunch of items picked up. So Bloodstone for Zai, and we saw Ori's Aghanim Scepter now being completed. Pudge is insanely strong right now. He's easily the strongest hero on the map. If he has Omni Knight protection and he gets Flesh Heap off, I think Liquid genuinely can't even kill him with five heroes during the duration of Flesh Heap plus Heavenly Grace. So they've got to be pretty strategic about how they approach this fight. Um, Ori has queued up his next item. It's going to be the Blink Dagger. So well, they are going to go on him top here. Flesh Heap is going to try duration. for it. Ice Shard's blocking him in. Nobody nearby, but he's going to go for Dismember. Instantly canceled thanks to the Split Earth from Zai, but this Rot is decimating them as Zai forced the TP out, but the hook back in. Split Earth is coming. He's faking it out. Doesn't do enough damage though, as I can just be walked down on Ori with another stack of flesh sheep that's up to seven. Yeah. They need more heroes than that. That doesn't cut it. It looks juicy, right? It looks tempting. He's even half duration flesh sheep when they initiate. All it takes is for one support to show up, and Ori can clean house there, and that's. And Aster yeah, probably... back to 2k now. It feels like Liquid will not make that mistake again. It's kind of like you're testing the limits. Are you able to pull that off? The answer is no. Next time you're bringing probably the Storm or the Morph to make sure you get that done. But it's a costly learning experience. It's two heroes dead. It's almost a mid-tier one. It's more Flesh Heap stacks like we talked about. And yeah, something else I guess we didn't mention. Marcy with Pudge is pretty interesting too, just for the rebound move speed. This hero isn't too fast, but effectively giving him haste when he initiates, he jumps on him. XXS will finish the tower here, no problem. Radiant yep, very not really defended, the rebound, okay. looking for an opening, but none to be found yet. Okay, he's going to be shown, but no Blink Dagger yet there for the instant uh, initiation from Ori. We see Matsu going menu. for Ag. standard morph here, uh, one of the best items to get against Pudge with the Ags. The, the stat steal is very powerful, and you steal this, obviously, stat resistance as well, so you can maybe lock onto him and bring him down. Um, it's the Lincolns that's a little bit unusual, I would say. Maybe we're talking about that a bit too much for, it's not like- Let's bring it up for the third time. It's not like an insane rarity, but I think a lot of players in this spot would have gone for a cheaper buildup with Falcon Blade into the Axe or maybe a- Well, I, I would say- Maybe it's a Manta game, I don't first know. First item is Varian. Yeah. But there's Dismember, there is Dispose, yep. and there's Assassinate, yep. is that it? Yep. I mean, that's one argument is Lincoln's is extremely good when there's only three things that cancel, right? Yeah, for sure. And it, I mean, it's also a feel-good item in terms of like being full health and mana when you're pushing around the map in terms of farming. It is a good item on the hero, but... They're hunting a sniper, but he has a lot of distance there. Boxy looking for an opening. Radiance Curry. He has, has the pike though. This is not easy. Yeah, and he's, and he's gonna use it prematurely there. there. They're spam pinging it out. They know. Yeah. Good. Awareness there from Aster as their lead continues to grow now at 4k with the blink dagger now online on Ori So he can just jump in I would assume a BKB would be next Let us fight as Zion boxy just have to try to keep Aster at bay a bit and 
you know what this conversation's going against, Cinderin. Yep. Who does it benefit? <laughs> Who's here? Five neutral. <laughs> Roche. The uh, same joke every time. That's I, Eventually I, somebody will laugh. That's the thing though, and when you get me. toward the end of the tournament, you run out of content, right? It's the same <laughs> with the teams. But actually we should, the drafts have been pretty creative today, so that's been pretty cool. Um, yeah, true. Roche, I guess if Boxy had more levels in tag team, probably the Radiant is the faster Roche killers, but overall, Marcy will always be one of the best heroes at doing it as a core. Level 2 Unleashed with Thor and Sidekick. Uh, speaking of which, Mickey! Oh, Zips reaction. just in time. Wants to get a little bit aggressive, but he's outnumbered. Yeah, he'll get out. He'll be able to get out. Good reaction. If that connects, that could have been really scary. But yeah, I don't... I guess either team can Roche relatively quickly if they find one or two core kills, and that looks to be Radiant's the game plan here for Aster. They're rotating top to start taking control of this area so they can start threatening Roche. And... If Liquid is showing two cores on the enemy side of the map or something like this, you could just sneak it with Marcy plus Sniper, I guess. I guess actually, they're pretty good at killing it. So, both teams looking at it more and more. Yep, there we go. They see cores bottom. Well, it's only one core in the Lesh, but let's see if he pops the Unleash or not. XXS is holding on to it. So this will be a slower kill than what it could be, but does offer the protection of in case a fight breaks out, he has that BKB Unleash, which is very, very powerful. And yeah, Aster know that they don't need it at all to kill it. They will grab it. Looks like it's going on Monet again, like last game. Could have seen it on Pudge in this one, honestly. We I could have. definitely think Ori is in a position to just go crazy with an Aegis, but but it seems rather protect Monet. Yeah, Monet always gets the Aegis. That's what we've learned here. No matter the hero. On to the high ground, the hook connects. But see Insania trying to get away, but some good moves. Not going to be enough though. Split Earth onto the sniper is the rest of Liquid trying to get away in this bot lane. Shrapnel slowing him to a crawl. Zai continuing to get headshot. Do they have the stun? They do. Ori with a double kill across the map. Now top lane. Looks like Liquid want to try to get something out of this. In case out of mana. He is. I don't know if he can get this kill. It has to TP out. Will live, but no kill for Liquid at all. If Aster had any TP with a stun there, that could have been a dead storm, but... They're all on cooldown or unavailable. So Mickey, I mean, that was just a full on global fight. Top to bottom to top again. Very understandable that Mickey tries for it with how many heroes from Aster rotated. But again, Storm just doesn't have enough in the tank to solo even the Jakiro. XXS, that's who they want. Boxy has a blink dagger, Walrus Punch as well. But XXX gets off his BKB and Unleash. And now he wants to fight because Ori has come to play. Matu, nice save on the Boxy. But it's gonna cost them the Crystal Maiden again. It could have been a lot worse for Liquid, but Aster able yeah. to keep their position three, Marcy alive. All things considered, that was not too terrible. Matsu showing up with the Ags there. Definitely helping out against the Pudge. Well, the zip in, they're trying to take out the Omni Knight. The hook from Matsu, that is enough for a kill, but the instant decision from Ori, they delete Boxy from the map. So it's a one for one in this little mini engagement. XXS, he's gonna get split earth with Mata just right clicking him. Looks like that's gonna be enough with the adaptive strike as well. And Aster, like they're gonna retreat despite having the Aegis for another three minutes. Nice dodge on the hook there from Liquid. Both of their heroes sidestepped it to the right. If that connects this fight, it's totally different, but they dodge that Ori play. And also great play call there from Mickey to go for the Omni in this situation. It's not an obvious move that you're able to pull this off, but with the hook connection from Matsu, they get that kill. Sure, the trade-off for the Tusk isn't the best, but it's good enough. When Omni's out of play, suddenly you can access new targets. You know there's no BKB on XXS, and that dodge on the hook, crucial for how this fight plays out. Zai would have been in a very precarious position there, but I guess to just run away and reset. Now we joke that Matu doesn't play Morphling, and he's not really, he's playing Pudge. <laughs> right? That's probably the reason he was laughing. Looking forward to getting that Agnum Scepter and turning into a big, juicy boy. I mean, how much sta how much stats does he get from that when he turns into a strength hero? So you steal 20% of their strength, and yeah. then he steals 40% status assist because it's a strength hero. Radiant's bottom so is under attack. it's very meaningful. Dyer's um, top tower is under attack. Still, obviously, part of the equation that Ori does have the Omni Knight. We cannot forget how much that matters in this instance because even Radiant's if Morph steals away a lot of Pudge's tank ability, Pudge is there, or Dyer's Omni's there to return it to him. Yep, true. So. 
It'll be a tower for Aster bottom. Zayas doing a lot of damage top from the fog. With yeah. I mean, it's kind of what it feels like he needs to do at this point. It's only a 3k lead though for Aster, but again, with the Aegis, and now knocking on the high ground on the tier three bottom. It's a slightly top different top. vibe to this than the last push they did last game in a similar situation. Just like they're in a stronger spot. Continuing to get sidekicks, which he didn't get last game, so Radiance will definitely expedite the high ground offense. Top, tower uh, is under attack. top lane was being pressured Dyer's a bit by Monta, actually forced out of fortification oh, nice. from Aster. Foxy there. But Ori, he wants to go in deep, instant initiation, counter initiation from Liquid. Snowball connects the zip in by Mickey, pops the BKB as well, but he gets dismembered. He's gonna die inside the BKB. No! Zips away with just a sliver of HP. Now can go heal up in the fountain. Now that the BKBs are down on Astra, but the hook comes out from Ori. Zai gets off the bloodstone, but it matters not. The rot is too powerful. Now this Rax is under peril. They're still pretty sustainable, Aster, with the Omni Knight. A lot of the time, Storm in situations like this can start finding kills when heroes stick around for too long, but Aster are not phased, they're not worried. They have enough in the tank to keep the heroes safe. You even see the salve here from XXS gonna be up to full health again. And it's like nothing happened for Aster. The only thing that's really on cooldown here that matters is the Marcy BKB. Oh, the blink hook, dismember, death for Insania. Aegis is down, but this is gonna be a full set of racks now. Ori has a BKB. I mean, not that they could kill him anyway before that. Yeah. I guess the, the silver lining here for Liquid is that Mickey survived because of the status resistance on Kaya Sanj, right? He would have died that, to yeah, that's otherwise, so. I mean, it's a very thin silver lining. It's like, it could have been worse, but essentially you got basically nothing and lost a full lane. And Aster are gonna start looking to push out the other two lanes on the map to keep this pressure. Now, bottom lane's gonna be a constant issue that Liquid have to deal with to get pushed out, and that means Aster will look to push out mid first and actually making a rotation toward top, feeling like they could find Mickey up here. This time he will have BKB again. It's been that long. Pichu is taking the outpost. That will be a giveaway to Mickey that they fear. He also has a ward there, keeping him safe. Ori is eyeing a Shiva's as the next item. He is. It's kind of incredible that Matsu has higher net worth than him, actually. I, I just looked and I was like, that's huh. very surprising. Ori has doesn't, 10 kills. It doesn't feel like it. Like 200 CS. Well, Matsu has almost 300. He did go Lincoln, so it's not really a damage build, right? Right. But now he's going Scott. He's only a point booster away. But I, I feel like it's going to be one item on top of the Scotty before he's really dishing out damage, like a butterfly or whatever the, whatever he wants to end up going. Damage. I mean, is there any? No, you're not going to go BKB this game. It's way too defensive on top Dyer's of the bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, you probably don't go BKB at least yet. I don't know what the best option he has really is. Can you even go like Daedalus after this? Just really hard commit on the damage part so you have a way of killing Pudge. Because I feel like that's what this game comes down to right now. For Liquid, the problem is they don't kill the heroes they need to kill. Aster's lineup's just way too tanky of a wall, and they're so confident they're gonna go up without Aegis. Almost landing the hook, they're already trying for a blind one into the tree line. This is a possible fight for Liquid because there's no Aegis this time on Sniper, but if Aster continue to have good formation and very good coverage with wards from the right, no. it's hard to find that attack angle that Liquid need, and Aster are gonna constantly pressure this tower with Liquid Fire, with Shrapnel plus attacks from Sniper. Yeah, well, there's Zip on in, they wanna get the Omni Knight immediately, will they get him? He gets four steps to safety, there's the Guardian Angel just in time, and Mickey has to buy back after dying right off the bat, and Matu is dead as well. A terrible fight for Liquid as the BKBs have come out from Aster. Now they can just focus down Zai. Another death, another kill from Monet. Ultra kill overall. Ori wants another hook. He gets it! Mickey completely out of mana as Monet trying to finish the job, but able to zip away is Mickey again, but Foxy slowed to a crawl and a rampage! Monet just sitting in the back while his fat friend does all the work, and he gets five to his name. It's just an insane strategy from Aster, but I, I really think Liquid's idea of jumping the Omni Knight there feels like the only possible yeah, way right. that they can win a fight. And 
Astro just quick enough to react. I think it was a defensive dispose from XXS that threw on the away. He gets Guardian Angel off, and the moment that happens, the fight is actually lost. I think it doesn't matter what Liquid do after that point. They just need to try and disengage and look for a better opportunity, but it's too late. They can't get out. Yeah. Pudge gets on top of them with a the rot. They lose a lot of heroes. Oh, I'll try here. Yeah, Mickey. Uh, oh my god, the damage. Uh, don't underestimate Monet. He's just picked up a Silver Edge. He hits really damn hard now. They do get the melee Rex. Oh, and there's a double damage. And oh, there nice. is a Roshan a minute 20, which yeah. neither team knows, obviously. This was the attempt to delete Siamese Cat, but he got off the Guardian Angel. And Liquid just lose the fight after that. It's just way too much damage. Matsu can't stand his ground. He's pretty tanky, right? He's got Lincoln's, Ag, Scotty, and yeah. he turned into Pudge, I think. Didn't matter. It's way too much damage. Got it. This Aster lineup just Radiant. proving to be formidable so far in the game. And if they, oh. Okay, Insania, he's Insania dead. went scouting, he found them. Yeah, we can see that Roche won't be up for another 45 seconds, so Aster just biding their time. Just wanna play disciplined Dota, out. make sure they Some don't attack. throw any leads. Here's the tricky part for Liquid though. They, if they give away this, this second Roche, I think the game is effectively lost. But the Roche will spawn before Insania is up. So if Aster are in position at the time it spawns, they could effectively force a 5v4. And even if it's just the Maiden, it's still, it's still a pretty crucial thing for Liquid to not have there. It's a 4 staff that's out of play. It's an AoE slow that's Radiant's out of play. Are under Aster just needs to keep scouting it. And if they recognize it, they will be able to grab it for free. Yep, I believe a courier will be sitting in the Roche pit. Radiant's Never mind. Doesn't work. Doesn't work anymore. But Mata, Roche Mata number two is to push the back. I like this. This is another approach, maybe. Maybe you can Radiant's defend Roche by pushing bottom. Damage. Force a rotation, but Aster just elect to use the glyph here to maintain Roche control rather than TP back basically Radiant's any hero that could have defended that tower. Yeah, I think Matu's gonna... Maybe they just give up the Aegis and Shard and try to get a Rax themselves. Matu going to town on this tier three, but it's gonna force a TP out. Lunda Jakiro oh, actually nice cancels shards, it. But Matu will still be scared off, and that is the Roche. And now the problem for Liquid is, okay, so you, it, it's extremely hard to take this fight that you kind of have to take, so you're gonna try to make this split push, split push play, but the only lane you can split is the one that the enemy team has strong creeps in. So Astro is just gonna force down mid, and the bottom lane will defend itself, no problem, unless Matu knocks on the front door. He's the only hero that can do anything about it. He's not doing it. Too many heroes missing on Aster, he doesn't feel safe. Yeah, Monet with the Aegis, he takes the shard as well, so has the concussive grenade. Even more slippery. That feels like the initiations from Mickey are... Pretty crucial, and this feels like a game you need to go Ags or something, but he's just gonna be too far away. Actually, the Orchid is a good choice against the Omni Knight. Yeah. That is one way to try to counteract, but the problem is he has an Eon Disc, he has yeah. a Force Staff. That's gonna be he. They actually fun. can't prevent him from getting spells off anymore. It's just impossible with the lineup they, they have. need to get a Nullifier, which yeah. is very expensive. Uh, nobody wants to buy it. Yeah. They have no Dispel for him at all, and... Yeah, he just needs to not get changed on to death and silence. Just get a four step ulti off and a heavenly grace and he's basically done his job, so. Yeah, so that play is out of the window now too. Pichu identifying that that is the one play Liquid had based on the previous fight and he's eliminating that one. So if Liquid can't force them back. I, they have no reposition. I mean, they have an offensive four step on Insania. I'm starting to look for kind of desperate approaches because it feels like four step into the splitter. Yeah. It is already on the ground. I mean, uh, otherwise this just happens, right? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> All right. All right. That was close. That hook went right through the two polygons that exist for Morphling. <laughs> Not including the cosmetics, of course. Very quick fingers from Matu, but again, they are on, on the back foot. BKB picked up by Zai. Yeah. And this is, like they have good defense with Lesh. And the Tusk to some degree as well. They just have absolutely zero map control, right? That's the problem. Bottom is pushing in, mid is pushing in, and top is now also starting to cross the halfway mark. And if Aster wants, they can cut the next wave top. So Liquid are completely cornered. I'm just going to turn into Sniper, so taking away some of that agile. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Monet. 
Takes a little take aim action to himself. A little right click action from Matu. But I mean, they're delaying it. But again, the, the lead is still growing in Astor's favor. There's no technical rush for them. And Astor's probably going to find this ward now, too, that is giving Liquid some really good information, right? Because now this camp is blocked, and they're like, wait, what? And there we go. So the last little bit of vision that Liquid had left given away by the camp itself. And you might wonder, like, why do you place a ward there? Isn't that going to be obvious to the enemy team when the camp doesn't spawn? Yes, but at the same time, it's really not an obvious spot to place it to begin with. So the sentries that you usually put in this area, which you see from Aster, the first sentry that they have did not find the ward, but ultimately they get it. Yeah, looking for the jump on to Matu. They're all smoked on the low ground. Overwhelming blink, not quite up yet for Ori, but... Yeah, this is kind of ready to telegraph go. because nobody is Radiant like Zai is getting pretty far top. Yeah, they nobody scanned showing it. Mid. <laughs> they just scanned it right now. Trying to delete the ward. They do so. The hook is in, but Ori not able to connect. Aster having to reset. Still with a minute 20 on the Aegis. Now they can just do the old sniper trick again. Get this tower kill. That's the biggest thing preventing them from getting onto the high ground anyway, on top of the split earth, of course. Lincoln's is popped now. Hook not connecting again from Ori, but there's the punch from Boxy into the hook from Matu. Already half HP on Monet, but again, he still has the Aegis and Zai getting destroyed. My goodness, he melted. Freezing Field comes out just for a split second, but it matters not. A second death for Liquid. Hook on into Monet, but he gets a concussive grenade off again. And Liquid crumbling here in game number two. Aster coming back with a vengeance, looking to get the Mega Creeps. Fireback comes out on Matu as one last potential stand here from Liquid. McKay not able to do too much. A nice ice path comes out into the dual breath. Oh. They find the Pudge finally, but how much is it going to cost them? Boxy ticking away ever so slowly. Matu, the last remaining member of Liquid after the buyback now. He turns into Punch, or he's still Pudge, in fact. Has the Rot just getting kited. Finally gets disposed back into the ice path. And there's, he's actually staying alive thanks to the strength morph. Has to reset back into the fountain. Boxy has to be careful. This would be a dieback for him. He's going to tick away. Matu had 6,000 health because he also had the strength from Punch. That is a uh, very beefy boy. Him, as the mega creeps matter. now come out. Aster, massive advantage here. GG still not called. It's only a matter of time here as the last tier four will fall. Matu and Zai trying to get something up. Really want to kill Monet now that the Aegis is gone, but the Ice Path is there. Hurricane Pike on top, and that is going to be the death of Liquid in game number two. So Aster, they come back really nicely to push this to three games. Yeah, that's got to be really good for their confidence. You know, in that first game, the first game was really close. There were plenty of opportunities in that game where Aster could have maybe started getting a, a big advantage. They didn't manage to claim it. Liquid ended it in a swift move. This game, Aster pretty much dominating more or less from start to finish. There were a couple of glimpses from Liquid, but for the most part, Aster just crushed them. I love their draft. I think the Omni Knight last pick was brilliant. Uh, they get their podge on Ori mid against the Storm of Mickey. He gets a solo kill. Uh, thank you to the fans that are watching. You really make this all possible. Every year I realize that more and more. So thank you everybody who came here to see Lasse play and the rest of our team. Uh, this one's for you. All right, we'll throw it right over to our casters. Thank you. Thank you, Slacks and Blitz. And like you said, game three underway. And I believe the first 10 minute discussion here by both of us will be about Matu Nightstalker <laughs> yeah. and what we think. I mean, the idea of a hero jumping on top of Drow makes sense. Uh, I would assume an Aghanim Scepter might be something that he'll prioritize, along with obviously the BKB and a Blink Dagger. Uh, am I missing anything else here? You can eat the boar when you get the shard. Actually, you can eat whatever Helm of the Dom, right? Does that work? Yeah, you, you, can During eat, nighttime. you can eat the Helm of the Overlord even, yeah. right? It's the only thing in the game that counters that, which I think was a big part of what is that only during together? nighttime or? Uh, yeah. Okay. The I, battle begins. I believe so. So it's all about getting. Me, now you're making me question myself. Yeah, I know. I, I do that all the time. Sorry about that. Uh, Boxy's going to ice shard his way onto the low ground, but he's going to be met by Boboka. We have some nice blocks. Yeah, it only it only targets ancients at night. So that's the only time he can kill the overlorded ancient creep. Yeah, okay. Um, 
But yeah, this this is a completely out of left field pick. Nobody expected it. You heard Entity, they were not expecting it at all. Stormstorm Storm, and Toby, obviously. And I would, I'd be willing to bet that Aster had no clue this was coming either. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's sometimes surprise picks like this show up amazingly, and sometimes they fall no. flat. Either way, it's a really creative response here for Liquid, and um, it's a pretty polarizing carry. I'll say that much. Nice Stalker has his games, but he also has games where he falls completely flat. You are the expert oh. on this hero too. Ah, I used, used to play to at mid. It was a different time. You don't yes. go that build anymore. Well, to be fair, nobody went that build. What was the build? I, I went Earn Ewells. Oh my that god. That was a different time. Yeah, it sounds horrible That's now, doesn't it? Just oh, it, awful. It worked back then. Your career makes so much sense now. Yeah. We are into Everyone the game, Everyone was of awful. <laughs> <laughs> Siamese guy getting pushed out here by Zai, playing the Pangolier. Uh, yeah, talk to me about the Drow Ranger, because you guys all predicted it. Why is it so good, this game? So, first of all, you have the Beastmaster Aura, which is nice for ranged strike right click carries. Um, secondly, Liquid don't have the best backline jump, right? And it's also just a favorite of Asters in this tournament. You saw them play Sniper two games in a row. They like playing Mane on this heavy, long-range artillery, so it just fits the bill. The only catch that Liquid had until they picked the Night Stalker that could maybe get on top of her is a Tusk or a Pango, which both kind of get countered by four stuff. So. You naturally want to buy Pike on this hero anyway, so it feels good. Um, and that's why we have so much focus on this NS, because I think he has he has a very clear job in this game that he needs to perform. Um, and if he does get to do that, it could look amazing. So, mid lane, something we talked about as well, how well does Lina do against Primal? So far, so good for Mickey. He's been playing a great Lina this tournament in general. He won with it in game one. Well, what's the reason that Primal, I wouldn't say he's fallen off necessarily, but he was completely ignored in the first two games, I believe. This is a hero that was picked or banned in basically every game in the group stage and a lot of the main stage. Yeah, I I don't know why they didn't consider it good enough. It's hard to remember all the drafts by heart because there might have been some counters in play or other heroes picked that, you know, just bumped his priority down a little bit. But it, it was pretty surprising to see overall given how even the later stages of this tournament, Primal's just been like a top tier yeah. size hero. I mean, we even cast a game, I believe it was Ace playing Primal Beast where like, there's three hard counters this year, and he destroyed. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't even matter. Oh, top lane. Big damage onto Zai here. Yep, he has a shield crash for that damage mitigation, but it's worn off now. Gets off the swashbuckle with the tag team combo as well, but it's not enough. Aster strikes first, and Monet is going to get help with this frostbite from Siamese Cat. Is it going to be enough for a double kill? Indeed. They get one each, and Aster on the board early, and. Obviously not a good start here for, for Liquid. You can see what they were going with the, the swashbuckle tag team combo is extremely strong. There's not enough damage yet. Drow has pretty decent armor. She's playing with seven armor in the lane with the Wraith fan. Uh, and Crystal Maid just... Crystal Maid is really good against this lane, I have to say. Like, the slow against Tusk is amazing for countering out tag team. You have Frostbite as a disarm as well. Like, there's just... There's not enough in the tank there for Liquid. And, it's kind of understandable that they're, I wouldn't say they're desperate, but they're really eager to try to find a kill in this lane because that's what it, what's going to give them comfort. Um, but that was just not the time. Maybe a level three timing would have been a lot stronger for them with two in tank team perhaps, or two in the either crash or slush buckle. See, Zai will choose the crash here. Instant frostbite. He's going to take quite a beating actually for getting yeah. that creep. He gets the swash off, but Half he's going to lose a lot of creeps to denies it looks like. Can't really get too close. You can hear Primal Beast just belching in the background. What the hell that was? Yeah, you love that. Up top lane. We got the multi shot coming out. Siamese Cat's in a lot of trouble, though. He's going to get taken out finally here from the liquid side. As Zai will barely get away. It's Monet just continuing to get these uh, the CS. He's 16 and 5 right now versus the Night Stalker, which is Matu, of course. 23 and 3 in the opposite lane. So, in terms of the position 1 CS, it's liquid favored right now. But obviously, kill wise, not so much. Yeah, Matsu's finding some great farm for sure. He has three mangoes that he can use during nighttime, which is coming up. That could lead to a chase. Oh, Speaking of chase. Ball from Boxy, Monet. He's going to get the multi shot off, and they're just going to turn this around onto Zai. Nice kill for Aster. An attempted TP out from Boxy should be fine. Yeah, uh, that's still, even if you survive there on Tusk, this still feels bad, right? Because you're abandoning a lane with creeps in that all this experience just effectively going to waste now. Mane has been going to be close to level 5 when Zai returns on level 3. This top lane is just 
it's toast for Liquid. This lane is not good, but the other two are going great. So both the Lina as well as the Night Stalker are having a good time. And as we talked about, nighttime now for Matsu could lead to some aggression in the bottom lane. Yep. Unfortunately for him, Undying, not the best kill partner during nighttime. He kind of has to do most of the work himself. Doesn't have like a slow or a stun to bring to the table. Uh, but at the very least, Matsu will be finding excellent farm down here. XXS isn't doing too bad though. Yeah, but Midlane, you mentioned Mickey is owning. 38-12 versus Ori's 23-1. and one. So Mickey with the huge advantage as bottom lane. Insane getting gone on for the time being, but basically out of mana at this point. But three mangoes there for Moss if he wants to feed his support a bit. Yeah, it is actually kind of tricky for the NS when you look at it. There's both the Orb of Venom on the Naga and the Boars. When the Boars hit level three here in a second, uh, this slow is going to be pretty substantial. To the Struggle to play as aggressively as you would like. Loving this from Mikib though, in the mid lane, getting half the tower, playing very aggressively with his Siege Creep Wave. Could even choose to glyph it here and just squeeze as much out of this as possible, but we'll choose not to. We do have the Crystal Maiden setting up, so Ori hitting level 6 from this wave. Pichu is in the neighborhood in case an opportunity opens up, but looks like not the case, so we'll just back off, cover at that angle. This will come in handy. In the meantime, Money is just having the time of his life top, just running at Zai. Look at that damage with the multi-shot. Zai now down to 200 health. This, I think, I dare say, might be Zai's lowest net worth this tournament, minute seven. Yeah, Pango versus he these long-range heroes. In Any hero that can orb walk is a pain for yeah. this hero. 1600 net worth on Pango to the 2800 of Beast, so a thousand net worth difference between the offlaners. And Zai is just not being given any space. He buys a ring of health to try to sustain, but he's almost going to get killed off by the Crystal Maiden here. Yeah. Has to back off once again, and it's tricky now for Boxy as well, right? Because where do you go as Tusk? It's hard to gank mid against the Primal. If he has any vision, he can get away with this onslaught. Oh, bottom, bottom lane. lane. We're going to see the Tombstone come out with the Void, but XXS can just TP away, knowing that the Void is on cooldown. Radiance mid the Tombstone used as well. Pretty long cooldown. Yeah, but still, Matu farming extremely well, and kind of items that we're expecting here from early on. He's going to get... He has the phase boots going for the armlet. He had the Helm of the Iron Wheel very early, so he can turn that into the armlet soon. Pulverize onto Insania. Trample to follow. Soul Rip's not going to be nearly enough to heal him out of that. And top lane, again, the aggression coming out from Monet. The multi shot has been owning. Boxy gets off the health salve. It's going to get canceled, but can he get out of this? He pops another one, it looks like. He's still going to live. And Zai is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He exists. That's Pango this game so far. Uh, I mean, is there any consideration? I mean, I know it's elimination game, but to give Boxy some farm ahead, like tra kind of a transition into four. I, I think that ship has almost sailed. It's eight minutes in and he has no net worth. So his recovery curve is way too hard, right? He has, he has the lowest net worth in the game. Oh, nice LSA. Pulverize came in, or Ori still has the Pulverize available. Looks like it's going to be a kill, but the Laguna Blade comes out onto Ori. That is enough to turn this around as Liquid TP in in space. Double kill for Matu. LSA connects onto the high ground. Ice Shards are there as well. And three kills in the name of Liquid. A great punish. Also, at the same time, felt a little bit forced. I think Ori didn't have enough mana to go for the combo he wanted to. Monet, threatening Zai here, will lose vision in the fog and Zai, try to chase. He has been on 10% HP the entire game, it feels like. Yep. But Liquid, over. like you said, in the other two lanes, pretty damn good. They get the tier one mid as well. And still with another minute Radiant's to go on the nighttime for Matsu. Matsu did get involved with the ult, so once nighttime ends, he will not have that to work with. But with this night, natural night still happening, he might go for the dive here. Yeah, they're Monet. going for it. Monet was slowed initially by one zombie. Gets a nice multi shot off. He's going to be stuck by the ice shards now. Swashbuckle from Zai to try to get some form of revenge. And Monet falls as Liquid finding tons of kills on the map now. It's gonna loosen their bot tower. XXS with the Helm of the Dominator will push this tower min at nine. But if Liquid can get this trade top, I think they're pretty happy with this. Like, given how terrible Zai's lane is, he's found his level six. They bring this down as well, starting to stabilize a little bit more. And as for Matsu's build, I think you go Armlet. He's getting the shard, which is just a given here against Beastmaster. Probably just BKB after, right? I don't think there's any reason to buy Axe when the Naga is support. That's true. Um, you'd rather get some marketing oh, single target. Initiation on a Mickey. 
Snowball comes in from Boxy, but Mickey taking the brunt of the damage from these illusions. Gets off the Laguna Blade, though. Man fight versus Ori, but looks like he's resigned to his death here. LSA not able to connect as Mickey drops to XXS in the end. Zai is rolling Thunder, not doing a ton here. He's gonna be able to snag the Invis rune at the very least. But we got the Onslaught coming in, but no vision. Although Zai will get clipped a bit by the trample. Yeah. Now they know there's no showing up there, there with the hurricane pushed back into Lena for the kill. And they're going to turn this into a tower push. So this is kind of scary times for Liquid. You don't have Dark Ascension for 10 seconds, but at least you have the Glyph. Maybe it's enough to hold this tower. Zai obviously has the Invis rune, which is something they also have to be wary of. They know he has it. He could be anywhere right now. That's how Invis works. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and he's uh, actually going to... Oh, that's an Observer Ward. Never mind. He's not going to he gets some important information that Liquid could act on here. Still no Rolling Thunder, and now he's showing. Roar was faked out. Yep, gets some squash and really shield crash off. off. He's playing very cocky right now, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of his team is in the area. But XXS is quite tanky. Going for the Wraith Pact, of course, after the, the Helm. Yeah, maybe you just don't go Helm of the Overlord at all. Because he can eat it? Because of NS. Like, maybe it's not worth it. I, it's only half the time. It's a lot of the time. And when you enter a team fight, you don't have Ancients nearby, right? So you bring your Ancient, he eats it, and then... And even if you're using it to split push, you're essentially just funneling in a lot of gold into NS. So I, I feel like we've seen this before, when Nightstalker offlane started becoming a pseudo counter to Beast, that Beastmaster would just bypass Overlord, because you're kind of just giving too much over. Yeah. So I kind of like this approach. You still want the Dawn because it just does that much this early in the game, but don't spend too much net worth on just getting creeps eaten. Um, Ori oh. on the other side of the ice shards. Nicely done from him. But we can see the CM here as Matu able to get the four shot off. It's a lot of damage coming out from yeah. uh, Dark we'll Ascension. Maiden, but that's Dark Ascension. I think he was hoping to get a bigger kill on the Primal Beast there, but Foxy's shards just barely too short, not clipping. What a weird net worth distribution this is. Liquid easily have the top two, and then they easily have six. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, which isn't too unhealthy for their lineup, to be honest. If there's a hero in this game that can have low net worth and still find major impact, it kind of is the Pangolier, right? So it's not a requirement for Zai to be farmed. Maybe he's going to go something like a dagger and just try to find a good alt hero there, or at least eat the roar for his Night Stalker, which is also really important. Um, yeah, very close for now. We've seen games, uh, I think it was at the Arlington Major, Night Stalker. It might have been, was it Carry Night Stalker? Yeah, I think it was Saberlight playing. Where you right. get the shard, you get Midas every game, but it seems that has fallen off. Mm. Uh, maybe a little too risky uh, being kind of pushed down by the likes of Beastmaster and Drought. Uh, but will be actually not going shard first. Has the Ogre Club right now. So he will go BKB. Shard definitely adds a lot of farm. Yeah, and he, he for a can't, hero that doesn't he get can't much. be adjusting to XXS not going Overlord because he wouldn't know that yet. So, true. He just thinks the BKB is the better timing, wants to be able to fight sooner rather than later. And it, it is a mandatory item in his carry this game. You can't play without it. He has to have it. Um, or it's going to get kited too hard. I'm showing in the bot lane now is. You can hear. Ori going to town, but not going to connect onto Matu. But the TP is coming in, so Liquid want to defend. See the the Troll Summoner out and about. Got the Rally Skeletons ready to go. Actually, it's only one. It's a singular Rally, not very powerful at all. But Matu defends successfully. And in terms of itemization for Mickey, looks like... Yeah, I think they're trying to line up these BKBs on both him and uh, Matu right now. Looks like he's already picked it up, actually. So we'll see if they fight a little early on. But tier one tower might get denied. No, not even a chance here. So a freebie for Aster. Uh, Beastmaster with a troll creep and two boars. They don't need to risk anything by putting a hero in range of that tower. Just let the summons do it, stand back. And Boxy also doesn't really dare to commit onto killing the summons. First of all, he's terrible at it, but even if he were to try, he could die in a roar. So, yeah, you just have to give that one up. But you can look for your own move. Liquid will try to find some sort of opening. And there might be a little bit of a false feels feeling of safety here with that Hawk finding nobody. Liquid know it's there, though, because they have a sentry. 
Uh, but this could open up a potential play for them if they can somehow get the right vision. They see XXS on this ward at the bottom tier one. Sorry. <laughs> but no way to invade. Yeah, so it's just going to continue to be farm session here. As I should mention, Baboka, you, you did bring up the, the potential Aghanim Scepter. It is a not a not a carry Naga, of course, but be able to get the ensnare on the Rolling Thunder. But I mean, it feels like Pango does go shard every game anyway. Yeah, then you ensnare the Night Stalker instead, which right. is true. mega high impact. So if he gets there on the naga it could be a game deciding item uh usually support nagas will not get this until pretty late but given the map control that aster have and the way they're playing if they just keep pushing out these lanes with the beast master with the primal beast and naga gets to jungle like this i mean you get there eventually he's get he's been giving a lot of space you can see baboka is fully committed to the idea he buys the blade of alacrity first thought they were gonna go for monet but instead they find ori who easily gets out thanks to his onslaught so gank attempt from Liquid is thwarted. That is... That's a Dark Ascension. So... Yeah, and it's a full four minutes until night. So Matu's gonna be at a big disadvantage. And... Right, Liquid are gonna try to put it to use here. Okay. So... They're gonna lose their tier two in all likelihood, but... They can get this first Roche. It's just pretty much the biggest value they could get out of this Antold when contest. it fails to connect. Might be a contest. There's a smoke here from Aster. Zai's gonna get off the rolling thunder. It's only gonna be an illusion to start. Baboka looking for the song, but he's getting controlled. Will they be able to keep it at bay? They do. And Mickey gets the Aegis. The roar applied to Zai, but it's really just a delay tactic, it feels like. Gets a snare on top of this, but Monet and company still wanna fight, but he's getting a Laguna bladed. Mickey pops the BKB, focusing on the CM, but now on the other side of the tree line, taking the right clicks. Looks like he's gonna be the first to fall in this engagement. But Pango died on the other side, and now they're gonna get the Night Stalker, Matu, in a lot of trouble. The LSA is connecting. He's gonna get saved. Beautiful stuff from Mickey. Centaur gets to stun on top of him now. And he's left to his own devices, completely surrounded. The gust is there, multi-shot and the axes. So Aster, they get some kills in retribution. Liquid taking the Aegis away in some respect from Aster. Yeah, what a great fight from Matsu that was. Just perfect armlet toggles, keeping him alive two times in a row. So at the very least, Liquid get out with him alive, but they do lose their Aegis and the second life on Lina. So can't really consider it a true win. At the very least, they don't need to worry about the Roche going Aster's way in the next minutes, but Aster, I think, still should be feeling pretty good about this overall exchange, considering the song didn't get them, the Aegis contesting, and they wrote the Pango, I should say, just to save the Naga, so they didn't have this for the Lina or for the NS, which also prompted Liquid to feel strong in this fight, right? But keep a look at Matsu here, so... First, the Pulverize here comes out. No follow-up damage is available. He's Frostbitten. It's going to toggle out of this one with Monet's shot midair and the charge. Yeah. Uh, we're back to Another live. fight. Hold the horses here, Cinderin. Looks like Siamese Cast can be the first to fall. And now XXS is the one that's completely surrounded. So wrong territory for him. Matu gets credit for that one. And he is very close to a BKB. Yeah, that was a killing spree. So some extra gold on that one for NS. 100 gold to go. Still another two minutes in the nighttime. So he should have his BKB in his inventory with nighttime still here. Yep. If Liquid want to try to take advantage. Of course, still has Dark Ascension. And does have the shard, by the way. So has been eating creeps. So I guess he went for the casual Ogre Axe into shard. And now is finishing BKB. Yeah. I I guess he changed his idea, changed his mind halfway. It seems like a little bit of a weird way to do it, but... Well, that Ogre Club, it seemed to save him in that last fight. <laughs> I guess so. An extra HP is pretty nice. Oh, XXS close to connecting the Roar there, but not quite. Locked up, but uh, yeah, Liquid not wanting to engage, it looks like. Very even game. And Aster showing some balls. I mean, they, they fought despite not getting the Aegis. Yeah, and not having the Roar and the Pango, yeah. Yeah, no Roar as well. But sometimes, it, even with key cooldowns and Dota, if you have the right angle and you get to take the initiative, it can work. And I don't know if you would consider that fight successful for either team. It was kind of a draw. But you could see where Aster were coming from. The fact that Pango Roll is down is very important for especially the Primal Beast, who now has BKB. So the next fight will be of a totally different nature coming out from Ori. Liquid might choose to smoke here. They are grouping up four, they will. 
Aster in a strong offensive position down here, pushing the tower with Ori in front. They have the ward covering the back angle. And they're gonna expect Liquid to do this because of the no heroes on the map. They have the prediction that this play is coming. Liquid do have Dark Ascension, though. His smoke gets popped. He's gonna pop Dark Ascension, but he's the focus. He can get roared inside his BKB. So he mitigates a ton of this damage. Now XXS is the one stuck basically on this cliff area. He's gonna get right clicked down quite easily. A nice kill to start things out for Liquid. Sai on the other side here is Laguna Blade's gonna find Siamese Cat, so just like that, it's 5v3. Now Mickey pops his BKB, Ori kind of a no man's land. His team still has Song available if they need to pop it, they will. Mickey, his BKB runs out, and the rest of Aster are gonna be able to walk away, it looks like. Outstanding fight from Liquid there. Their BKB usage was just perfect, right? Matsu gets it off before he gets roared, and Ori thought he was gonna connect on the roar outside of BKB, so he committed all his stuff to go in on the Beastmaster, or sorry, on the Night Stalker, together with Beastmaster. That play fails, then Beastmaster's isolated and gets killed. Pango, in the meantime, is completely cutting off Drow from the entire fight for like 10 seconds. We're gonna see the replay here, so look at this. This BKB crucial, right? Otherwise, Ori plus XXS and the Drow probably just kill off Matsu, but he stays alive. And now Pango on the bottom right is just rolling Drow out of the picture, quite literally, the entire fight until he finally gets to turn around now, but the fight's already over. This play was kind of crazy for Mori. I, yeah. I don't know if he accounted <laughs> for, if he was, if he thought Mickey had used BKB, it turns into a BKB trade in the end, which isn't the, all the worst for him, but yeah. 2K lead now for Team Liquid. And the Aghanim Scepter for Boboka almost there. 80 gold away, and he'll be able to ensnare the Rolling Thunder, as we've said. And of course, more importantly, he'll be able to reel in enemies, Cinderin. Yeah, we haven't seen that used very much. <laughs> and if we have, we've forgotten about it. <laughs> I like the concept, but it definitely needs... It has not been very favored to do in the song. Yes. I mean, other than that, the Axe is great. Like, we're gonna see here very shortly why that is. Yeah, so Zai is not buying the shard that Toby talked about as a as a count, as kind of a pseudo counter to ensnare Axe, but he's going Lotus, which is another way of solving it. Doesn't have it yet though, so this coming fight could be a big surprise factor for Zai, where he's relying on going in on the Drow. If he gets ensnared and Drow gets to focus him for a few seconds, he dies. The fight's going to be of a totally different nature than the last one. Yeah, I mean that's the downside of Lotus is it's way more expensive than Shard, obviously, and he yeah. is. Pretty far away. The upside is he can use it on NS if he gets the snare. True. So that is a pretty big help. He'll get both, I'm sure. Uh, probably, yeah. As he's actually had to use a tome for himself, that just shows how rough of a game it has been for Zai. As the tier two tower is gonna go down one way or another as the tombstone is placed. Pulverize coming in from Ori, pretty much full duration here on Sania, but he's more than healthy enough to continue to fight is now Ori is stuck in no man's land. Laguna's blade, down he goes as Zai going in with the rolling thunder, now applying all the pressure to XXS. He's gonna get disarmed for the time being. This is looking like three kills very easily for Liquid. Song was available, but still BKBs were up. I think Boca, it, he it might only, still have to use it here. It only just came up toward the end of that. He didn't have it to save Ori. I think he could have maybe BKB TP'd out, but I guess maybe Tusk was in range for a punch. Um, but yeah, the, these engages from Ori have just not worked out the way he wanted it to. He's he's charging up the the onslaught, and the moment he does that, Insania drops the tombstone before he gets jumped, and the follow-up damage just wasn't there anyways. They didn't even kill the Undying to start off the fight, and Liquid make a very easy fight out of that one. Liquid with a lot of fans here, obviously, now gaining some momentum in this crucial game number three. Getting this tier one tower, but it looks like Aster wants to try to defend. They're too late. They are. Tower falls. Now we have a silver edge on Mickey. Yeah, at the same time, Drow gets BKB. So Aster now have another tool against the Pango roll that's been ruining Mana's game so far. Now he can reliably get some damage off. I got everything off. Yeah. Flick and roll, dude. They need to get the fuck out. He's gonna TP out on Primal too. Oh, he has no I'm running it. I'm running it. Primal, 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 Primal. primal, primal. primal. I'm killing Primal. Look at me. Looking at Ty, looking at Ty. Kill two, please. Look at the beast. Running, running. I'm okay, killing CM. CM dead to me. Who got this? Still running in. Still running in. They almost seemed it surprised that he was there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, there's huh? a primal beast here all alone. Okay, okay we'll take it. Uh, interesting build from Matu. 
uh, after the BKB armlet, now has a basher, but not opting for a blink dagger or anything like that. Instead, going for a nullifier. Very cool item. Yeah, is a good way of, for him to counter off the pike from Dara if she doesn't have the BKB. Um, not much Dara's else to nullify for now, right? I mean, if you get it off before the BKB, the BKB doesn't do anything anyway. Yeah. It remains. I wonder if... But I feel like Blink Dagger at some point is going to be pretty important for him. But into the Roche Pit, Liquid Go. And yeah, Aster have an idea this is happening. They're going to smoke up. Is it going to be too late? No, it's at half HP right now. The Rolling Thunder coming in, mostly on Illusions. He's going to get roared right off the bat. They're focusing on the pit now. No Song to come as Mickey gets the Aegis. Song a little bit late. Is there a shard on the ground? There is. Boboka steals the shard. As here comes the Onslaught. Looks like the focus is on the Tusk to start this out. The Naga's gonna be the trade, so it's a one for one. Matu wants to fight, but a big multi-shot coming from Monet, but a bigger BKB from Matu. And now they're gonna get triple kill for Mike. Aster are dropping like flies. Ori has to BKB. Onslaught to safety. Looks like he's fine, but Liquid coming out on top again in this fight. Yeah, these Roche calls they've made so far in this game have been absolutely perfect. Again, Zai with the coverage against the Naga rotating in and getting the song off. And it took them quite a while to kill Zai during the roar as well, because yeah. he, have, he has the armor of Lotus Orb instead of the shard. It makes him a lot tankier against the Drow. So you're going to see the replay here. S pretty much same situation as earlier in the game. The exact same spot, same logic. Oh, song too late. He's like, wait, there's a shard. So he'll go and grab that. And he consumed it, by the yep. way. Uh, I, we're going to need to see what the other shards are in this game. I mean, there's a Beastmaster shard that he has not purchased in there. I, I don't know about that auto consumption. Song healing is it is good. Definitely, it, it's not bad, but it's one of the weaker ones on their teams for sure. Yeah, yeah that's very surprising. That I wonder which the best one is. Like maybe Drow. I don't know. It's maybe I Drow mean, or Primal Beast. I, I, been good I think Beastmaster's is the best by far, surely. The diving bombs or whatever. Yeah, the thing about dive bomb being a root, right? They ha already have the Lotus, which I believe counters it. They have BKBs, so I'm not True. I'm not sure if that does enough compared to the other ones. But either way, they now have a song that heals. <laughs> they could have had rock throw for God's sake. Yeah, I, I think the rock throw could have also been good this game. I mean, in the pit, that's amazing. Right? Yeah, and it's also amazing for Ori because it gives him a reliable cue that he can go in. Like if he hits a rock throw on. Let's say the Night Stalker, perhaps he has the confidence to get a charge that is going to connect, right? Yeah. Which has been a problem for him so far in this game, is going in and actually accomplishing something with this Onslaught, which Liquid have covered really well. They're now going to take the top tier two. Building their lead to now 7,000. Aegis in the hands of Lena for another two and a half minutes. You would imagine they want to go and get the mid tower as well. Yeah, most likely. Wraith packed almost online for Boxy. And Matu switched it up. Unfortunately, won't be seeing Nullify. He's going for the AC, which not only makes him tankier and a little bit more uh, right-clicky, but pushing towers is going to be even easier. Yep. And for the side of Aster, what are the items that they're waiting for? It looks like for XXS, the BKB is still not there. About a thousand away from finishing that, but it looks like they're going to smoke into this Aegis. Maybe this will catch Liquid off of guard here. Hawk giving a little bit of vision. Boxy in the area. Not going to pop smokes initially, though. Yeah. Liquid kind of know this is happening. They break the illusions here. Yep. And smoke just pops there. Aboka with the instant ensnare. Wants to get off the song, but won't need to. They'll just walk away casually, dewarding. Still a little less than two minutes on this Aegis. Yeah. Do they want to use it though? Dyer's middle tower There's no repositioning from Aster, so you can go and hit this tower with Lina, knowing that the Aegis will be s sufficient coverage. Like, you're not going to get swapped into base and killed there and die again, for example. So. Wait, there's no Vengeful Spirit in the game? Is that what you're saying? Nope. Yeah, well, that's one of the displacement spells, Shannon. There's more than that. <laughs> that's true. There's no Marcy. No there's hope. no Pudge anymore. No Pudge. Sadly. Yeah. Starting to look better and better for Liquid. Dyer's Mickey is now solo tower. pushing bottom tier two. Top. Super confident here. Yeah. Knowing where Aster are, we'll grab this tower. They're reading the situation very, very right. So tier two dead, and Mickey can now, you know, poke into tier three a little bit if he wants. He does. Now that his teammates are arriving. 
We see the win probability right now, 77% for Team Liquid in this game number three. Guess what? It was 81 for Aster earlier. Wow, really? Minute 15. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I looked at it. Like, I don't 81? Know I, I don't know if I. I mean, they were that. they were winning, but it wasn't. Until yeah. 80, 20. That's wow. Surprising. So yeah, the Aegis looks like it's just going to be expiring the old-fashioned way. And is that because they just didn't have enough time? Is it literally nighttime related, perhaps? I don't know. I, d I do feel like they could have put this a bit more to use, to be honest. I think there was a way for Mika to push out a little bit more. But like you said, nighttime might be a concern. And also, if you're feeling in a pretty good control of the game, this is maybe the one way you give Aster a big comeback is setting them up for a successful kill in their base into song and more kills so when you try to escape. Uh, this way you can just keep controlling the map. You're closing in on the AC on Night Stalker as well, so that's going to be a part of the next fight. He's coming out now, as a matter of fact. So yeah, they're just keeping it cool. It's obviously a huge moment for them. This is a very... This is a top three at TI. Yep. Don't want to mess it up. Well, the time... Uh, has been given out for XXS to at least finish his BKB. He's about to get that as Matu's AC gets delivered as well. So, some potential power spikes coming out. I mean, a fresh BKB, pretty important, but it is a Beastmaster. Yeah, not sure how impactful this is really going to be. It feels like he's been able to get his roar off the last fights anyway. So, I don't really know if this is going to be very noticeable compared to the Night Stalker AC, which is definitely a big bump up in strength Radiant for scanning. Team Liquid. Scan coming out, it's gonna miss, but onto the high ground they go. Siamese Cat is completely isolated now. He gets destroyed inside with a huge rolling thunder onto two, forcing the BKB from Monet, as it looks like Boboka will be the sacrifice. So two quick kills for Liquid. Tombstone has been expended along with the Dark Ascension. And now the high ground they go. Both supports for Aster have buyback. Here comes the pulverized BKB from Ori. Instant roar, but there's the Lotus Orb reapplying it. And now the BKB from Matu able to walk away from the song relatively easily, but actually stuck inside here. He gets reeled in to the high ground. I never thought I'd see it. It proved no, nothing. It didn't even matter, Cinder. Mickey. <laughs> He's going to right-click a bit onto the tower, but now that the reeling is down, there's nothing to fear for Liquid. In a 5v4 situation, Zaya with the Basher, so the Swashbuckle becoming much more fearsome. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to go for Axe next just to ramp up on that, or if he will get another defensive item like Lincoln's. But yeah, another huge moment for Liquid. Die back on Naga. They lost absolutely nothing there, Liquid did, right? Nope, nothing at all. And now they're, again, with the map position they have and the amazing warding they have, they're in a really good spot to maybe get the next Roche. You see this roll from Zai just forcing the whole situation. Has to BKB on Mane, and that means he won't have that in the follow-up fight here as Naga returns to the fight. I was hoping we get a replay of the real in, if I'm being honest. Really hype. Good initiation from Ori, though. And they just don't have enough damage. He's too tanky. Indeed. Draw is not quite start. there yet. Wait, we're gonna wait, reel in, wait. There it is! Unbelievable! And then he dies. Very dangerous fish to reel in, no doubt about it. It's like you said, Roche is probably next on the list here for Liquid if they can continue to have this map control. We won't know for another 10 seconds when it spawns. As now Matu is eyeing the nullifier. Is it just for the, the Hurricane Pike? Oh, there's also a Ghost Scepter on, on Siamese Cat. Yep. I don't think there's any Yules, though. But still, pretty big counters to both those items. And it's going to be a relatively late rush. Nikkei is so insanely farmed. I just realized he's 150 CS ahead of the next hero in the game. And he seems to have a double damage uh, quite often this game. Ori will clean up the wave, still be forced to glyph, though. Yeah. This should not be underestimated how much this could end up meaning later. Because the Roche will be falling likely before this glyph comes back up, whichever team gets it. And if that is Liquid, that basically opens up for a free tier 3. They'll obviously get another glyph after that, but... This Radiant lineup kills towers really fast if Lino gets to just stand and deliver. Indeed. But and Aster... Push up mid. They want to aggress. They're going to find Insania, the instant pull. 
pulverize Guts to follow, but the Rolling Thunder is coming in, and Sania is going to live. Now the Roar on top of Zai. They're right-clicking him very easily, but XXS is taking damage as well. So it's a one-for-one one in terms of the position threes, but they lose the Primal Beast as well, and no buyback here for Aster as they're left with three members. And... Still 50 seconds on Roche, so Aster will technically, in fact, everyone will be up. Such an awkward situation to play as Naga Siren there as well, right? What do you do? Do you use Song to try to save your Beastmaster with the heal? Then you're also saving the enemy Pango. So, or actually, no, he could have Song, right? He was in roll. I actually think Boboka maybe with the heal would have made the difference, but he was holding on to it. Yeah, Matu ends up getting the tower here, getting kited a bit as the Lincoln's applied, but you can see Mickey is the real right clicker here. Fortifications popped. Top tower is under attack. And they're gonna reset. They're not even yeah, they're not gonna go for the melee. Don't want to overextend. And Roche will be up in Roche. ten. And they do have natural knight for four minutes, so Night Stalker is still very powerful despite not having ascension. Monster can still do Oh nice eye shards. shards. Here comes the initiation. Oh, instant snowball actually ruins it for Ori. But he gets to pulverize off after the BKB, getting kited to a high degree here, but LSA not going to connect as Matu. Continue the pressure as Zai gets up the Rolling Thunder, and Ori left to his own devices. One minute of no Primal Beast. XSS takes the Laguna Blade and takes another death to his name. Five versus three. They're going to get the melee racks and likely go for Roche after, although there are no creeps here, so the backdoor protection is enabled. Uh, the wave is coming now, though, so easily going to get the first lane. The question is, are they going to stop there? Mickey is insanely farmed. He's so far ahead. 10k over the drow. And now they're going for the second set. Yes. Yep. They know that these buybacks are long cooldowns. That's two sets, and they probably still have time to go get Roche. But they do have to be careful. We've seen the song come into play, and it's going to be up in six seconds. Yeah. Matsu does not want to go home today. Could have been his last game, but he's 10-0 and 11 on the Night Stalker that his coach <laughs> said he can't play. <laughs> so kind of making a point that he can play whatever you damn want. That's right. And they're in the Roche pit. And Roche has the Aghanim Scepter, which I hope it's on Matu. For the love of God, please. It will probably be on Mickey. Damn it. Wait. It was on... It's currently Zai. Okay, yeah, they want the extra fast chance. Zai, okay, okay, fair also enough. Also good. Yeah. Very good axe. We're discussing him buying it himself. Now he just gets it for free. And look at that. He's top three net worth now. Would you look at that, Cinder? And after that rough start, he had a all it takes is some roaches. He had a great help start. Out. No surprise to see him on third here. <laughs> <laughs> and Aster left to be kind of in defense mode, but the longer they're in defense mode, the bigger the deficit becomes. 32k lead for Liquid, as they're on the doorstep of securing themselves top three here. And that's gonna lead to, potentially, if this happens, three EU teams left at TI-11. And we have Mickey. Oh, the Lincolns is already proc, but there's the instant Walrus Punch, nicely done from Boxy. Huge rolling thunder, down goes Primal Beast again. Boboka's song gives them a little bit of space, but he's getting controlled now. The rolling thunder continuing to proc, and he's dead as well. And now the focus is onto the Drow Ranger. No bash this time around, but Matu finds what he needs. Buyback now into the Drow. Snowball coming in, Walrus Punch to follow. How much do they want to dive here? Freezing Field gets canceled. CM has to buy back into the game. Ice Shards, not enough to keep them outside the fountain. So Liquid forcing themselves <laughs> to go for the Mega Creeps. And Liquid looking extremely, extremely good. And we talked about the momentum from the last five days. It has definitely continued here today. And on to the throw. And GG is called Team Liquid. Move on eliminated from TI-11. Yeah, we had no idea what to expect out of this game. Some very different drafts. Boboka on Naga, we have Matu on Night Stalker. But the <laughs> constant that has been working for Liquid so well in the playoffs, Mickey on the Lina again with an outstanding performance. Insane farm, insane damage, output, lane push, the whole shenanigans he did 